early. So welcome to our, well, not first meeting of the year, but first meeting of 2023. A happy new year to everybody. It's nice to be in person. I hope everybody had a good time with family and friends yes, and had power or mostly power. And uh, so it's nice to see everybody. Welcome to the people that are online. Uh, David, Mrs. Kenaylor and Eric. And oh, Maggie, welcome. Okay. So I'm wondering if, if we have any public comments. Michael or Mrs. Canego, can you hear me? Do you, are you here for any public comment or? I'm not sure if you can hear me. Okay. Well, here that there's no public comment, I'm going to continue if, with our board learning. I want to welcome Phil. Thank you for being with us again, Phil. You had a nice thing. You didn't have power for a while, so it's not for you, but. You can join us right at the table wherever you wanna. And we're gonna start with the board learning. And the floor is yours. So thank you, Floor. Uh, it's good to be here this evening. The theme that I see in the three chapters that we wanted to discuss tonight really is all about board self-assessment. Um, interestingly though, as this is, um, the content is more specifically about the kinds of things a board would want to assess themselves on. And so I don't know how many of you have had a chance to read the chapter or chapters. There were three here in the middle of the book, um, five, six, and seven. And I, I want to point out a few highlights from those chapters that really kind of stand out to me. Uh, at the very beginning in chapter five, I think page 68, just draw your attention to um, there's increased attention. Uh, the text says, continues to be focused on school board accountability and the school board's impact on student performance. Uh, at the time this book was put together, that was still a relatively new idea, um, actually quite new in educational leadership, even that principals or superintendents make a difference when it comes to student achievement. Now, it, it's important to be mindful of the fact that the people who are closest to the children, uh, typically the teachers and paraeducators, they're most responsible for a specific child's learning. And so as we think about that, what's the school board's role in a child's learning? It's about the system. It's about a, a culture and a climate that supports student learning and closing gaps. And this is, uh, there's more emerging research on that idea of how boards can contribute to closing gaps. But a, a couple of other things I would just call to your attention here, page 69. Um, school boards serve, I liked this quote, at the selected, as the selected leadership, accountable to their stakeholders for their school's performance. So thinking about that nexus of where public meets public education, and again, the board's role in the system performance, one is clearly of accountability. How, how does the board appropriately hold the system accountable for improved student achievement? Echoed throughout these chapters is this um, concept of balance right, of, of not micromanaging and not being disengaged. And individual board members, as well as the board as a whole, finding that spot to where we can be um, thoughtful and informed in providing oversight to the system. The, the, um, the reference different assessment tools throughout these chapters, I don't think that's too important. Uh, in my work in board self-assessment of the last 20 years, what seems to be most important is that the board assesses themselves. <laughs> it doesn't, like, you know, the tools, kind of like superintendent evaluation, if you ever do a Google search for superintendent evaluation, you, you'll see millions of hits that come up, something to do, and, and literally thousands of different instruments that could be used. It doesn't matter. It's, it's about that reflection of the board to say, how are we doing as a board? 
how, how are we, what are we contributing to advancing the goals we've set for the system and what might we be doing that are detracting or taking away um, from the system? One of the things that I would just underscore on page 71, this idea, what, what is balanced governance behavior? So not just the theory of, you know, being thoughtfully engaged, but what are the behaviors of balanced governance? And, and two of the things that are brought out on page 71 are this focus on shared leadership. It's been very important to me when I speak on school governance in conferences at other states. Uh, I like to emphasize this key point of shared leadership. Most of us think of leadership as something we do, but serving on a school board, shared leadership, it's, it's something we do together, right? And, and I've had experiences mountain climbing where, you know, one person was more knowledgeable, more proficient, more uh, capable by credentials, but it was somebody else, maybe less experienced that said, I think we're supposed to be going that way. Like, I mean, you know, some, some fairly important things. And so how we navigate that, whether we've been on the board 10 years or more, or whether we've been on the board 10 weeks or less, you know, how we navigate that sense of shared leadership, I think, is a, a critical component of balance. Uh, it's not just one person, but it's the whole team together. Uh, it was on page 72, that quote I was thinking of at the very bottom of the page. I, I just want to read that. Based on their understanding that those closest to the students are the most knowledgeable and responsible for student achievement. The board and administration implemented significant organizational and academic changes. And then there are eight things here that are called out. It's not intended to be an exhaustive list at all, but it really gets to that heart of if you think about, okay, what can a school board do? What can a school board do that can contribute to improve student performance? And uh, again, eight things are called out there, but then in the next paragraph, they wrote, provide the resources, clarity, and training needed to make the change successful. So three categories, resources, clarity, and training. Tonight, the word clarity is what's been resonating with me. And I want to talk about that a little bit more as we go along, sort of the board's responsibility for establishing clarity. Again, within these three chapters, there's almost an unfolding of different types of governance standards, um, different ways to approach. Here's what a board should do. There's these, these lists uh, of essential behaviors, essential characteristics of, of a board, uh, those kinds of things. But I, I want to suggest to you that one of the most important things we can do as a board is provide clarity, clarity for the administration, clarity for the system. Um, at the end of this chapter, how a board and individual members transcend personal and systemic counterproductive and self-serving governance behaviors. That's the challenges for all of us. Uh, as one speaker I've heard will frequently say, ego is not your amigo. <laughs> and, and it's something, you know, administrators have to learn this in their career board members individually and collectively, we have to learn that, that it's not about our ego. Uh, it's not about us looking good. It's not about somebody looking bad. It's not about an individual winning. <laughs> it, it's about the work of the board advancing. And, it, and it's not always intuitive, right, to uh, to get to that place that it's not about me. It's it's about this, this team and this board moving forward. And, and in a school system, it's not just about the board moving forward, but it's about all of the schools, all of the students, all of the staff moving forward. The chapter six got into these, uh, and a, a lot of this was developed in the state of Oregon at one point, but uh, technical elements and what they call adaptive elements. I would draw your attention to page 79, just to get a, a sense of that, the, what they described as elements of success. Um, these are, uh, again, another list of school board standards. These uh, technical elements, vision-directed planning, getting that clarity, community engagement, effective leadership, accountability, 
using data for continuous improvement. That's been a theme in, in board research over the last 20 years. How does the board appropriately use data? And maybe not the, the term we heard for many years, data driven, but maybe data informed. Like, you know, so it's, we're making informed decisions supported by data and not necessarily driven by someone's interpretation of the data. So those technical elements of board work, five of them, and then there are these five adaptive elements. Uh, we might say hard skills, soft skills, uh, cultural responsiveness. That's huge. We're all learning and growing and improving in that area. Climate. What's the climate uh, of the school system? Uh, and here they emphasize that it's the board that sets the expectations for um, student performance, for improved achievement, for closing gaps. Um, they, they really talk a lot in the three chapters collectively about the board learning, leading a learning organization, right? And, and modeling learning. But again, that goes to board self-assessment where the board is modeling the type of reflection, how are we doing as a team, that you would hope that every teacher and frankly, every student in your system is, is also experiencing that reflective practice. Uh, thinking in terms of systems. I don't, I don't know about individuals in the room. I know for me, that was a stretch as a board member to uh, kind of transcend in my thinking from my day job and very tactical, Here's how we do things. Here's how we put things together. Here's how we make things happen to this bigger, broader sense of systems, right? School systems, school districts have multiple systems. You have systems for personnel, for hiring, for evaluating. You have systems for transportation, for food service, um, systems for curriculum and, and cycles of things being done. Lots and lots of systems and at the board level, when we're most effective, we're thinking in terms of all, all these systems, how are they affected? Not we read a piece of research in USA Today and uh, we, we decide here's the new thing that the school district should do. And so we bring that to the board meeting to try to persuade our friends and, and uh, that's, that's not very effective boardsmanship. Uh, I've been there, done that, it didn't serve me well. And I've seen a lot of others uh, try to do that. And, and you know, it's like, the, the next chapter gets into this concept of stability and what can the board do to really reinforce, build, um, maintain stability in the system. Uh, we know that most effective improvement happens as a steady course of action over time. It's not the knee jerk stuff. It's, it's that steady course. So how does the board position itself to think with a trusty mindset, right? How, how does this affect the system? And what could we say or do that might just be a little nudge, uh, a little qu a question, um, an open-ended question that helps guide and sort of inspire uh, improvement or performance? A couple other things just quickly out of this as we go along. E each of those areas are unpacked in um, chapter six. And if you had interest in that, you know, whether it's the cultural responsiveness, um, continuous improvement, one thing that stood out to me on page 84, because um, this was this book published in 2015, a compilation of research that builds up to that year. So before this present era of um, challenges and conflicts and pandemic and politics and um, all of the things that we've experienced over the last four or five years, uh, there's guidance in here for how the board might implement an equity lens. And this is an area where you might um, give some thought and attention to at, at the bottom of page 84, just a, a way to use an equity lens tool to evaluate how are we doing as a board? Uh, how are we thinking about our policies? Are we looking at our policies? How are we thinking about our budget? Are we considering equity as we formulate and adopt a budget? Right, all of, of the work of the board, and, and I think you know, there's some key questions there. Uh, again, in board self-assessment sort of format, if the board were to ask themselves and reflect on, there would be an opportunity for improvement um, and just looking at things through an equity lens. A couple of quotes I, I just really wanna call your attention to, they, they call these expert comments on page 87. And uh, 
they're worth reading aloud. What separates a learning community from an ordinary school is its collective commitment to guiding principles that articulate what the people in the school believe and what they seek to create. Furthermore, these guiding principles are not just articulated by those in positions of leadership. Even more important, they are embedded in the hearts and minds of people throughout the school. So as you think about you know, cultivating a learning community in the Washington Central Supervisory Union, how can the board inspire, model, lead, suggest, nudge? <laughs> you know, what are those um, opportunities for the board to really lead an, a, a learning organization? And then obviously commending you for your time and commitment the last few months of just thinking together about board work on, on a deeper level. Um, how are we doing? What are we doing? How do we do this? How might we improve? Um, lots and lots of tips and techniques. The other thing I would call out is just this very next quote um, about creating clarity. In the draft governance standards for the state of Vermont, which are just going through rulemaking right now with the um, Agency of Education, the, the primary focus at the beginning of the standards is on the board setting governance priorities, being clear what the organization is supposed to accomplish, and giving some, some guidance to you know, parameters of working well within. This is what's important to us as a team. I like the way they framed this here, create organizational clarity. Organizational clarity is not merely about choosing the right words to describe an organization's mission, strategy, or values. It's about agreeing on the fundamental concepts that drive it. An organization that has achieved clarity has a sense of unity around everything it does. It aligns resources, especially the human ones, around common concepts values, definitions, goals, and strategies. So these two things I, I would really lift out of, of the three chapters as being um, probably most important. Uh, the board thinking in terms of we are leading a learning organization. How do we do that? What does it mean if we're going to have, if our school district, if our community is going to be a learning organization, what's the board's role in that? And secondly, or maybe in, in companion with that, is the board just having really deep clarity, your, your why, uh, an agreed and shared sense of this is why this is important to us. And to the extent possible that at the dais, as it were, at the board table, your conversations are about that why. Your conversations are about values because the petty stuff, it comes and goes. And there'll be something petty this month and something else petty next month. And there'll be a, a community person complaining about this and a staff person wanting that. And that's just the nature of the business. It's human nature, right? So th there'll be all kinds of things that are really important in the moment. They get a lot of emotions. They, they get a, a lot of attention. Uh, maybe wake us up at night. But as you back out of that, what are we really trying to do here right? as a board? What, what, do you, what do you really want to accomplish? And the more you can get to that shared conversation about what, what your why is, the more clearly you can govern and sort of shape and nudge and grow in the direction you want to go. So they ask these questions a couple different ways throughout the text. Um, the board self-assessing, how is our board affected high levels of student achievement. What, what is our board doing that affects student achievement? And then second, how does our board work together to make school board decisions? So in, in the vein of um, self-assessment, any thoughts on either one of those two things that you would be willing to share? How is your board affecting improved levels of student achievement? And how does your board work together to, to make school board decisions? If we were meeting for the first time at Capitol 
Bull Grounds or Rabble Rousers or Bohemian Bakery, just in case you ever want to get together. Um, <laughs> how how might you respond to to those questions? I left it open. Just like, what is your board doing to affect improved student achievement, and how is your board making decisions? What's What's that process? Good, bad, different? Well, clarity really struck me as you were saying and, uh -huh. and reading it because I think that's what we're talking about is we're talking about becoming clearer in what we're defining and what we're saying. So when we're looking at um, how we make, we set parameters around the budgeting so that there was clarity around that expectation. Then as we're seeing the reality of it, I think we're working for clarity as you're saying, what is it that we want to do that will affect outcomes, that will provide those opportunities to affect outcomes because we're not the ones doing that work. So I think clarity to me really uh, is connected to the start of our work that we've identified that we need to be, be doing that. And I think that um, we have worked hard to be sure that we're, uh, we can agree to disagree and that we can yeah. and you know and that we well some of us may have a different way of how we're bringing our agenda so to speak to the work we're able to see it uh, from the other sides and either we do change how we approach it or how we think but we know it's part of the journey great job of responding to both questions at once <laughs> <That's really nice. laughs> Nice petition that people can start. someone else uh, new to the board or on the board a while, either one, just kind of your perspective. How's the board doing in sort of maintaining a focus and on educational equity and improving achievement? Um, or how's the board doing making decisions? I think a very good job making decisions. I think that we have a, a, a hard-won solidarity since this district started. I think everybody, unders everybody understands that everyone else is working in good faith. I think one of the, one of the important aspects of leadership right, um, is that when you make decisions, not everyone is going to agree with you, but, but people follow an effective leader regardless. If they feel heard and if they feel the process has been, you know, in in good faith, and I I I think we're there, uh, in terms of how we, and I, I we're there, and I, I think it's extremely valuable, and we should protect and cherish that. Um, in terms of how we affect student learning, I, we've been clear over the last couple of years, like where we want to focus that on. You know, I think I think we've provided. I hope we've provided that clarity to the administration about what our goal is. Great. You know, not in terms of numbers, right, mm -hmm. or, or or data, uh -huh. but where we want the trend to go. The focus. Yeah. Well, I I think as being in the board for for longer, I I, I think we we still have ways to improve. Like I think we made great strides to have. You know, we have I feel a pretty effective quality committee that really strives to be data informed and work with that, that the board has engaged in learning the past two years, it, how to best it, work together and understand, you know, uh, organizational, not organizational, but being a, I think the leadership team uh, has a good learning uh, organization and the board was not there at the beginning, but I feel like we have made big strides to us also being informed and knowing what best practices are, how we can best support our administrators to make sure that they can, we're removing obstacles rather than creating more obstacles for them to, you know, so, you know, part of that, part of that clarity. And, and we, you know, we still have ways to go in, for example, I can think that we are working now and through our justice coalition in understanding better what equity means, right? Like we've been talking, we adopted the statement We've been talking about using an equity lens. We use it for hiring practices, which I think affects how we better serve our students. Yeah. And, and I think we all understand that we need to learn together. And the last thing I would say is that 
I think that we all know that not a single member of us, even the chair or vice chair, whatever, has uh, can do it alone, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, what we, the power of the board comes from all of us working together and being able to disagree but set a tone that inspires is that creates the culture that they think our administrators want to see that we can simplify it. I, I, you know, I could. If I, if, I, if I really think about all of our principals and our leaders, I think that we can do a better job as we learn and simplifying what we are asking, like being more clear, you know, because there's limited amount of time, limited amount of resources, and, you know, it's that equity conversation, so it's that work in progress that, that I think we have the right mixture of diversity of thought. <laughs> To you know that that we can aspire to, so I you know I I feel like really hopeful, especially. Yeah. So let me let me take just a, a small risk, and yeah. and not I'm not putting you on the spot. And oh, it might be good if someone else answers this, but so what would improvement look like for the board? Like if the board was improving in its effectiveness at making decisions, or you know maintaining commitment to decisions the board makes. Or if the board was uh, governing in a way that supports improved achievement and closing gaps, like what what might that look like? What would be what might the board be doing differently, just in the spirit of continuous improvement? I think there'd be a change in redundancy of conversations. I mean, you know, an example of the steering committee. I was asked a question about steps in the process of the superintendent evaluation when it's clearly laid out in the timeline, but I didn't really pay attention to it. So I would say that the effectiveness of that is it's all there. And, and um, once we're used to kind of that well-oiled machine, so to speak, running, then the redundancy is not as present. We don't keep repeating the conversations because we're all um, aware and active in it. Wow, that would make administrators' lives easier too, right? <laughs> That's a frequent big win. We're talking about hallmarks of high-performing boards, right? And I think as you were speaking earlier, it really hit me, Diane, that um, on a hallmark of a high-performing board, everybody knows this is what's important to that board. Like the community, you know, students, staff, uh, even people in other districts, other communities, that board is totally focused on X, you, you know, what it, they're like, they're, there's such a consistency to the things that the board is paying most attention to and pushing forward that it, it begins to be known. Anyone else a little stab at what, what would improvement look like in open public session here? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that we could, Sort of going along with the clarity thing, there's a transparency piece that I think we could be better at as a um, board. As a board um, uh, because I think there's still some degree of um, mystery as to um, specifically, most recently, with the budget process um, with the community and even as a board member, um, I felt a little in the dark about some stuff. Um, so I think just being really clear as we move towards you know year-round budgeting just being super clear with what the process is what the discussions are and what's on the table so that we can get input from the community along the way rather than you know um when emotions are running hot because x y or z is yeah. potentially on the chopping block yeah. that's good thank you <clears throat> ursula yeah so I think it's something that we have talked about in the past, but like working on our community engagement uh -huh. and how it can be something more than just us giving information to the community, but how to effectively get information back from the community and have them join us yeah. um, in conversations, which is tough to having them be evolved, involved in the transparency. But I think it's a thing that we've talked about a lot is working on that community engagement piece. And, and I know my time's like right at up. Um, one small nugget I, I would leave you with just in, and I'll give Kari a chance. Um, and you're, you know, in superintendent evaluation time, again, when I think of a hallmark of a high performing board, part of that conversation 
conversation is, Mrs. Superintendent, what can we do as a board to improve? Mm -hmm. Or maybe one of the most effective ways I've seen that worded in an executive session was the board chair saying, are we doing anything as a board that's hindering you from doing your job, mm -hmm. right? Just really inviting that candor after her evaluation is all done, right? <laughs> it's like, are there some things you, you know, it'd be good for us to know. Right. Um, that, that was a really good point. And Ursula made a really good point too, and I try to weave it in. The way I'm thinking about what would it might it look like to be more effective would would, would be more clarity. Uh -huh. So if we've done some good things. You know, we have a mission. We have defined the student learning outcomes that we think are essential. We created a budget parameter where we've been working on how are we actually going to monitor and know maybe we, we need to do more we need to get more clarity on what that looks like and also what our priorities are within that it was easy to say we want people to be able to read and write and yeah. so on <laughs> but when it gets difficult uh -huh. like the budget conversation that we had last time we would we would benefit from being really clear with ourselves about which of those parameters we set are the actually the most important to yeah. us. And then to bring it back to Ursula, if, if we had clarity with our community about those things, mm -hmm. it would be even more effective, I suspect. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yes, please. Um, as a newer board member, um, and reflecting on what other folks have already said, I think that we have a fair amount of turnover. So the um, solidity of the board is not guaranteed, right? Yeah, right. And right. <clears throat> because of that and different timing of terms and these unanticipated vacancies, so it just highlights the need for the mentorship that the the board members who have been here longer offer us and, and continuing to make that a priority so that we can avoid the redundancy that was <coughs> discussed yeah, yeah. and maximize our potential efficiency and clarity because as Michaela just mentioned, you know, there are situations where we may not be as informed because we don't have that institutional memory. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and we rely on folks who are more experienced because the school board is so different than how any other board I've ever been on yes. functions. Yes. And it, it's really like a specialized uh -huh. skill to be a school board member. Um, and it's nuanced and it's a lot, you know, it's a lot. There, there's a great page here, 95 in chapter seven, that really focuses in on stabilizing characteristics for individual school board members, mm -hmm. like, right, and sort of owning that. Um, but there are 10 different things here to look at and sort of self assess mm -hmm. how am I doing in this area, this area? Mm -hmm. um, because to your point, you know, turnover's a constant with a 15 member board. There's always turnover every year, I would assume. Um, times, yeah. and sometimes multiple times and it, you know it's partly the nature of it uh, but it doesn't have to continue that way and the authors point out in this chapter uh, chapter seven you know, not all turnover is bad which is it's not all bad um, but what can the board do to keep things as stable as possible knowing people are getting on and off mm -hmm. the leadership bus um how do they keep it stable enough for the administration? And when you when you have success in some of the areas that have been identified here, how do you make sure that becomes part of policy and practice mm -hmm. and onboarding mm -hmm. for new board members? So thanks for any other comments from board members that are not even good. I felt badly that nobody was signed in for public comment. I thought, well, maybe I should have signed in and said something. Or not. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. So as before we get started, because the next one is student report, the students send their regrets. They couldn't be here. They apologize. There was not allowed to report anything anyways, and they just couldn't be here. So they send their regrets. Um, and it, we also, Joshua couldn't join us today because he's, he's sick. Mm -hmm. yeah, so with that, Superintendent Report, Colt Report, do you want to give us some sure. highlights? Um, uh, similar, short, um, but I, I just wanted to highlight um, we're 
Uh, I did make a comment about this in the in the report. It doesn't feel like we left hiring season and haven't left it in a while. But we are headed into what would normally be our hiring season. So um, there is a little bit of an overview for you about the key points in our hiring processes for, this is mostly for professional staff, although there's information about support staff. Um, so it just felt like a nice time to highlight what that looks like. Um, in all of our schools, those are the pieces that are consistent. Obviously, there's some variability based on a certain position and things like that, but I'm happy to answer questions. We did not, there are not. Here, but here, I mean, yes, we might have to share. Yes. Maggie, I can use it all. Sorry about that. So, are there any questions for, for Megan? Did everybody have a chance to read? Because that was just a great table, and that would be a great way to, to help inform our community, too, or when questions come up that there's a system. I'm, I'm curious how much response we have to some of these more national advertising systems for applicants. So that's a great question. We and we have not been doing this long enough to have a good answer for it. So we did we have started um, tracking when we hire people how they found us, but that's only a very recent thing. Um, qualitatively, we get more through school spring mm -hmm. than um, probably anything else. But we will have better information about that. <laughs> Any other questions? Do we think that it would be helpful, as you were saying, in, in terms of educating all of us around this procedure, to also have the collective bargaining agreement language in here at all so that we understand um, how it dovetails? Just because I know there was a question about it previously, and seeing where it fits in here would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Are you talking the entire collective bargaining agreement or just the no, hiring language? No, the parts that have to connect to these steps. <laughs> like, that's a lot, but. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, what does it mean to consider? And yes. 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 Um, I think that would be really helpful. You know, one of the things that is, this was generated for the purposes of giving you this information now. It also needs to be translated into an actual procedure document that that could be just produced if someone has mm -hmm. questions. Those are things that we're working on in, in a lot of different areas. That would mm -hmm. That's a great suggestion to add to that level of an update. Yep. And even given the, so much on it that I just wonder about um, another line, another mm -hmm. column that just yep. has the exact language from the CBA. Yep. That so that you know, if you don't have time to crosswalk it, yep. you know, just putting it. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Okay. So it's well, I guess I, I've got a question. Oh, this this yes. process, how much of this is you? How much of this is a legacy? Well, uh, this was developed by having going around to each of the principals, hearing what they do. Um, it's very consistent with what I am experiencing. But yeah, it, it is. This is the this is the current reality. Mm -hmm. What I would say is, it it has the essential components that I would want to see in a hiring process. Okay. Um, but as we identify what our procedures are and where they vary and where they shouldn't vary, these are the conversations that we are having. Is that good, John? Yeah. And I, and I guess I would add to that that when we were doing the diversifying the educator workforce, mm -hmm. it, we submitted some documents to Carla to make sure that we were posting. So we're not getting a lot of responses on but it's not a reason to not post them right because that one of the goals that we would have aspirations is to diversify our workforce you know, which is part of the and you know and it, we can continue to add to 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 that absolutely and i think if we're keeping data we should also keep data on longevity <laughs> of people who we do hire mm -hmm. and where they're coming from or <laughs> Are exit interviews ever done? Are they usually done? We were talking about that recently, not not by request. Certainly, it's not a um, like an assumed procedure that we would do with everyone. Um, but they're certainly granted when they're asked, which is not necessarily the best or only way to do okay. it. Um, but 
yeah, no we, kind of exit um, survey? We actually talked about should we have an exit survey so that we're covering the people who wouldn't think to ask for an exit interview. Um, earlier this year, there was some ambiguity expressed from a um, hiring committee in one of our schools, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if that has is like a, explicitly resolved in so that everyone's on the same page and we're not facing that as a board, facing those concerns as a board again. Well, what I would say is part of this summary was to give the board a broader picture of this is what the hiring process looks like. Mm -hmm. That's one part of that. Um, whether or not it is fully resolved, I, I, I think we may not know until we start the season. But this has allowed us to say, what are we doing? What are the pieces that um, need to be a part of the process? Mm -hmm. And if they aren't, what are we going to do to fix that heading into that season? Um, so I would, I would say that that's part of why we're having these conversations. And now we have a document to, to refer mm -hmm. to because right. we've talked, to, this is the second mm -hmm. time that the board is reviewing what we do and this is a way to have a document mm -hmm. that we can look back at and that the public can look at. To Clarity. Clarity. Mm -hmm. Clarity. <laughs> Phil, did you hear that? Just <laughs> 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 taking notes. <laughs> I'm just so <laughs> a little big. <vague. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, you know, committee will be made up of blah, 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 as the position requires. I mean, I think some of the complaints last time was as, mm -hmm. as to who made up the committee. Um, I, is there more specifics behind this, or is this, well, I mean, you can't be 100% right. specific all the time. But. Here's what we've learned, especially with, you know, I, I was only half joking when I said the hiring season hasn't ended. Part of the reality of the way we are hiring right now is it happens to happen faster and you have to pull together who you have. Right. So what's there are, I mean, I, if, if you look at that list, teachers, support staff, um, sometimes teachers in other buildings, community representative, those are consistent across all of the district. And I think that's really important. Um, could be special area, right? Like the, the and others, as dictated by the position. To me, what I found from talking to all of the principals is that's in addition to, if oh, that okay. is helpful. So it's mm -hmm. and of others as the position Correct. Requires. The ones listed are required. Yes. Required. yes. yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Which is a good good feedback. <laughs> because if it doesn't read that way, then, then that's a Maybe good. It, was, it might have just been me. <laughs> yeah. No. And it's a work in progress. I mean, that that is the reality, is that we these are things that we need to get better at writing down so that we have and follow. Um, but it was also encouraging that it was largely consistent across all of our schools. So that, that's good. And Michaela, to that point, and I do mean Michaela, uh, <laughs> you know, that clarity around because how it reads to each one of us, it is important to have that feedback because even another example from the steering committee is I had asked the question about the detail in the packet that the board would be receiving. And so I had been told that the presentation would, was still in progress, but that there would be, you know, uh, budget information in the, in the packet. So I thought my question was answered but but the reality was no what what was in the packet was kind of the generic information that we had and then the specific was still being worked out and so I thought I had asked the right question and gotten an answer that I thought helped me but it, and you answered it exactly as it needed to be answered but so it's kind of finding that where is that sweet spot of asking of, of us having that collective understanding and having that clarity around what's the information we need to make decisions. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we added the video that the staff was getting mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. so to yes. make sure that you know, the board, is, so Megan sent that to everybody to make sure the board had all of yes. the information that was out yeah. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and to, I have a thought that connects those two things. You know, one of them is a lot, that it's, that's also why we have a budget reflection period yeah. after mm -hmm. the budget ends, so that we can say, you know, he, right. here's what would be more helpful. And then relating that to anything, whether it's hiring procedures or any other kind of procedures, they're also meant to be iterative and reviewed. Our first job is figuring out what we have, what we don't have, what we need to create, then 
then it's a like then it's a cycle of this this could use some clarity here this could use the collective bargaining language you know things like that so I have two quick questions yeah, yeah. Um, one is the posting so I know that during the school year our staff are already <laughs> in their roles um, so moving people around during the school year would be very disruptive but for the upcoming school year what is the I guess what does it look like for posting in terms of allowing current staff to mm. move and transition into yeah. open positions before postings are being put out there or being considered, you know, and I, I know a part of this, I can look at the, the, the contract, but if there is somebody who wants to move into a role, do they get that role automatically or is it still, I mean, if they're qualified for it, do they get it automatically or is it still posted and they still have to be a part of that interview process? Yeah, that's a great question. The, for, the contractual answer to the question is, we have to, it has to be posted seven days, seven days? Okay. Certain amount of time before we can make any hiring movements. Okay. So we wouldn't be, and you can post internal and external at the same time, and that's okay, but you can't make a hiring move until it's been posted, and that that's designed to allow, and it's posted across the district so that internal people know what's available. Um, it's it is an application process. Our and I say that um, there's different ways contracts handle that. Mm -hmm. Ours, some contracts are very specific to say if an internal person applies, you can say yes, you can say no, or you can put them through the process. Ours isn't even that specific, but it does ask that we consider them as part of the process. Okay. Which that goes back to that mm -hmm. clarity. It would be helpful to have that language as as part of it. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then my second question, and this is just a curiosity one, um, with the makeup of the interview committees, I'm curious as to why for the ESP there isn't a parent or mm -hmm. and or community member, because I worked as a para and we work very closely with students in many ways closer than teachers do. And so I would think that having parental input <laughs> on some of those positions yeah. would be beneficial. Um, so I'm, I'm just curious yes. as to why mm -hmm. that I, isn't part of the process. The logistic, well, I would say it can be, and sometimes it is. Okay. It's not required because of the frequency with which you are hiring support staff. Okay. And frankly, we wish we could hire more people. Um, and some positions, I mean, the ESP covers maintenance and custodian right. and food service. Um, I guess so, I'm thinking more parent, it's like special ed. Paraeducators. Yeah, and w without putting the only principal in the room on the spot. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> it, I mean I, I'm curious what that priming process has to happen so much faster mm -hmm. and more often. I'm curious what your thought is on uh, that. <laughs> the hiring process for ESP right now is extremely difficult. Yes. Like, we're trying to get people within a day of okay. their applications in. Yes. We have a lot of no shows. Putting parents through that is mm -hmm. uh, is right now it's just not a, a good process. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard enough for us to just get them to the door to interview right now, mm -hmm. and so we try to put a kid with the, and and okay. we try. I will say that here at the at U32, we try to make sure that we have students who would be impacted mm -hmm. by the people mm -hmm. who are we're hiring. So if we're hiring a special educator, we try to find a student who has knowledge about the you know special needs and and all of that. So we really do try to make sure that we get a student who would be impacted. That's fantastic. Um, at all possible. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Sorry. <laughs> I have a follow-up question. If it's um, if we're talking about a one-on-one -on -one para, would there also be a privacy concern if you're interviewing and had a team of community members and parents involved? I think it would depend. You'd certainly have to be careful about what questions yeah. you asked and, yeah. and not being too specific. Yeah. Um, it could probably be done, mm -hmm. um, and I would completely agree with Stephen that it's so hard to turn the process around fast enough, mm -hmm. but yeah, you definitely have to pay attention to that. Thank you. Okay. Let's, uh, ready to move on. Uh, the Central Vermont Career Center, just a quick report, we had our finance committee meeting last night. Uh, the only thing really to report, because uh, Jody was able to come 
talk to all of us. I mm -hmm. think all of you were here the last time. We continue to work in our budget. We're also in the midst of negotiations, uh, too. Uh, our next uh, board meeting is on the 9th, where we hope to be able to look at the second draft of our, our budget. Uh, it's looking good <laughs> so far. Uh, we are going to have our Febr in February 27th is going to be our informational and meeting. Uh, and we're in the process of deciding if it's going to be online or in person, trying to see how we not conflict with 18 other towns to have a informational meeting. So mm -hmm. right now it's scheduled at 6 p.m. at the Spalling Auditorium, because mm -hmm. it's right next door to there. I'll give you more information as it gets uh, closer. I wish I could give you a number on the budget, but we got, uh, we, we're we not sure yet. We're, it's, it's looking good. The biggest part for us right now is going to be negotiations. Yeah. And what night is that information? Yeah, that night is February 27th, which I is think. our break. School break. Right. It yeah, it's right. just like we. It, it was the thirty. This is just how we ended up in the mm -hmm. in the calendar. I'm not. It, this is for you know people to come and if they have any questions before mm -hmm. the be, before the vote, yeah, we will be sending. Uh, hopefully, everybody received that postcard. I hope from the career mm -hmm. center. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there was a postcard sent. All of the states are there except for the actual time of the 27. We missed that. But other than that, uh, you should have uh, information of when the next uh, meeting is. We are hoping to have uh, more news about the budget, and then we'll send out a cleaner uh, it, so that you have an idea what it is. We just got the CLA recently. You know, it's you know, it's a little different than what we do here in our budget. We have already given a number for our uh, um, for Susan to work with. And that's the number that we're working with right now. Yeah, so that's all I have to to report. And then I'll make sure to send. Uh, there's been a, there's a lot of great uh, things happening, like live things happening. And I shared with you guys uh, the the drawing the blood. I know that sounds like it's a huge thing. We're, our medical uh, section of the career center is just doing phenomenal. They've been written all over the place, and it's just we're really proud and we already have more applicants for the career center that we can yeah. possibly possibly mm -hmm. take so it's, it's great and now moving on uh, reviewing board discussion reviewing school board vacancies so one thing is jonas did ask the question about um the uh, whether or not so like I have a petition not like I do <laughs> she's a running petition. tonight <laughs> yeah and, um, and so I had asked Rosie uh, LeClaire uh, about whether or not it had to be each individual town or not and she said this is from her email mm -hmm. it's the same for each of you however you will insert the town you are representing you need 30 signatures and they can come from voters in any of the five towns because we voted in all five towns. Right. It, it is confusing on the petition, though, because if you read, it says, we certify that we are presently voters in the town represented in the district. Mm -hmm. And so, and because I have to list Berlin above, I can see that confusion. Mm -hmm. But the, you are a town, you are a representative, I mean, you live in the town. The, any of the five towns so within the district. So, um, and it does, she said that she needs everything, including the consent, my consent, to be delivered before 5 p.m. on Monday, January 30th, is what she said. Oh, oh that's late. That's late. Yeah. yeah How can you get the ballots mailed out and everything if it's not till the 30th? I know. I that's know. later than it's been in, oh, but it's a much later town meeting day. Oh, that's true, the town meeting is way later this This is year. the latest town yeah. meeting day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why. So yeah, isn't we, it the we, earliest town meeting? Because isn't it March? It's March. It's March. Oh, oh. Last year it was the yeah. earliest. Okay, don't yeah, judge me on my petition for that. Tuesday is the first, and it's on the eighth. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Yeah, it's usually either Mia's birthday or my anniversary. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't know. But <laughs> every year. Town meeting day is race day. Yeah. <laughs> I have to do. So, March first is a Wednesday, so the first town meeting day is yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. So, so the, the dollar matter day, right? 
terrible, terrible, it is terrible. Race day at Mad River and uh-huh. just about every other ski area in the state. Yeah, it is. Uh-huh. Yeah, big ski racing day. day. If we ever get snow. Well, yeah. 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 Clarity, Clarity, <laughs> Berlin. <laughs> Diane is running. Callas, Daniel. I'm running. Uh, Eric, you're online still. Oh, we lost him. Oh. Mm-hmm. We lost him. I don't remind him. He tried to connect a couple times, so he might have been having. He's driving to oh. some oh. lessons, and I thought he was going to be. Joshua knows he couldn't be, but I'll make sure. And Michaela, you know that you're. Are you running? Are you running? Oh, <laughs> look at those eyes. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no, well, no, you don't have to respond. I just yeah, want I you know to know. My term is up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of these. <laughs> 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 yeah, we can sign it while you're yeah, here. Right? We can sign it. You don't have to turn it in. You just yeah. have to be ready. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. feel free, card. Send it around. <laughs> I just have some last <laughs> negotiations <laughs> with the family. <laughs> we can have one, right? Not to quibble with Rosie or anything, but the signature requirement is 30 or 1% of your town's voters. Right. Which Does that mean you can get 30 from across the district? Is the, or? The biggest town is probably 30. Mm-hmm. And so that's why. That's so what it's it's right. Right. Yeah. It's ever's last, so if you just go with 30, yeah. you're safe. You're 30, you're safe. Yeah. Go with like 32, so just to make sure. One person. Yeah. Yeah, I got 10. Yeah, I don't know. Because, like, from our, our yeah, large, I was going to say, Worcester's is like 10. But I'd be safe. And I did it for like. In the past year, it's only been 30. Maybe not actually. I'll go with that. I'm not going to. Actually, it might have been less. Yeah, because I could. Rosie, it's really good, so. But, you know, I'm not trying to put anybody in the spot, but if somebody, you know, either needs help or has questions and needs help to collect the signatures or is not sure, it would be great for us to know so that we can plan accordingly because, you know, it's not like people are, like, lining up. (laughs) So I was going to say, do we typically have a conversation about people who are choosing not to continue? We don't, and oh, so we don't have no, 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 no. Yeah, so, so it's great just to be, like, you know, just to let us know. I'm, I'm not trying to put anybody in the spot. So, you know, do whatever you need to do best for your family. It's good. And, it's good. Uh, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Right. right. It's well, that's really where it's like. <laughs> When I ran last year, I thought I was running for the remainder of the term that I was like sitting in, mm-hmm. um, which would have put me in Josh's position of rerunning mm-hmm. this year. But Jill left, and so they yeah. just mm-hmm. me over to the three-year term. Yeah. And then our write-in oh. was that remainder one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it would have been one of those things like you can put stuff out on Front Porch Forum, reminding people to run and what they need to do. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't hurt us as a board for people to know that they could run against us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we need to do a better job with this. I think we should be having these conversations in October. Right. Okay. Getting the word out. <laughs> Personally. That's good input. Just and we'll put it in our calendar. In our calendar. <laughs> I think uh, Callis posted um, approximately 20 openings, vacancies, before, yeah, right, you know, for volunteer positions and for paid positions. And the response, I know, I find, and I've made an attempt for all of the like unexpected, anticipated, um, unanticipated openings. That people's response is, "Thank you for serving." Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. thank you for being there. No, mm-hmm. not interested. Mm-hmm. So, there's not yeah. a lot of contested. No. Mm-hmm. Right. There's been one. And we had this conversation in the community forum back in the library. I think you spoke a lot, Natasha, about like civic engagement and you know how are we we've got our student representatives but how are we reaching out so that kids who are coming up in the system are appreciating the importance of say, civic engagement you know there used to be visits to town offices etc in fourth grade as part of their um, their governance training and stuff but you know we have to start young if we're going to have People want to do these things just like volunteer fire, road crew, all this stuff. We had also talked over the years about um, increasing the compensation to try to attract different, you know, a a broader range of the community here. Um, And instead of doing it all at once, we had talked about sort of 
increasing it a little bit each year. I don't think we've done that this year. We haven't done that this year. I mm -hmm. For the yeah, thousand dollars, do that, right? Yeah, now we did. Yeah, I actually had crossed that as we voted on that last year, but mm -hmm. I didn't know, just considering the the budget conversations that we were having. But I also don't want to be that the place where we feel like we. So I was I had processed just because we already voted on it, so we didn't need to change it. But it's a good point. If we want to change it, now is the time to Can to I make do a motion? it. Yeah, I, I don't see why not. Well. Okay. He has to make a motion so we can have a discussion. Okay. So. Yeah, I move to increase the compensation for directors from 1,050 to 1,100, and for the chair from 2,100 to 2,200. I'll second. What were the amounts again? Sorry. Uh, just adding 50 to each the director and the chair. Which? But, uh, 50 to the to directors and 100 to the chair. Okay. So, so 20, to 1,100 20, is 2,200. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, um, this, this is what we talked about last year, just building in yep. a $50 increase. And yep. um, yeah. I guess the only question is, is it, is it enough? No. no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to me, I wonder if it's, um, if, if I still had young children. I mean, I think it's more so about um, uh, how do we have potential help with uh, babysitting costs and things like that. And, you know, getting the stipend this stipend isn't going to make that difference. So it's almost like also if it's, uh, you know, equal isn't the same. You know what I mean? Equity doesn't mean being the same. And so for if we want family uh, parents on our board, do we also have uh, a pocket of money that uh, those who need help with uh, Child care costs and elder care. To, yeah, and elder care, mm -hmm. in order to be that there's also that pocket of money too. Because what's the barrier for people yes. coming? Would that need to be in here? Do you think? So I, and, I, uh, while I mention that, my heavy duty concern is that even a fifty dollar increase, if I'm cutting positions in order to balance our mm -hmm. budget, doesn't mm -hmm. feel yeah, right so. to me. Um, and so, and it's it's a minuscule amount, and I get that. I just it doesn't feel right to me. Yeah, I agree with Diane on both accounts. Um, I mentioned a few meetings ago, like having a movie night for kids or something. You know, maybe some something mm -hmm. even in house where people board members could bring their children. Um, as an option that would probably be more cost effective than giving everyone babysitting money. Um, but I think having a child care and elder care help would be great. And and yeah, if we're if the budget's so tight and fifty dollars isn't gonna diversify the board because mm -hmm. <laughs> it's such a small amount, it doesn't then I would I would solicit a friendly amendment to increase that amount. Well, I, I think well, we, we have a motion on the floor, but I, I think we could vote it down. I, I want to say I, I felt like we could scratch this conversation this year, not this conversation, but scratch the race for the board this this year on that pocket. But we could do something different that is more allocating some money for the board it, to, okay. uh, through the budget through the through the budget to have mm -hmm. a stipend, right? Or have like where you're either a stipend for being able to pay a kid to babysit or have a, reimbursement or, or, or reimbursement or do it locally. Providing the, some, yeah, opening the door to providing some opportunities. Provide, yeah, oh, there is other yeah. Yeah. funds yeah. available. And instead of putting this to a vote. Right. Would, really? I, I mean, I think just that, that would cost more money than the $175 we're talking about. I, I agree, but I think it would be better served. I don't know. You speak. Well, the only thing I was going to add, which is I hope a short-term reality, but it is an absolute reality right now. Um, we don't have the people to come in and pay, and like. It, I think most of us would. We've talked about this for our forums. It would be great to offer childcare, and it isn't necessarily a financial thing. We don't know how we would staff it. Like our, we we can barely get ourselves through the school day. So because of that, I do wonder if having the ability to reimburse. Not that it's any easier for a family to find a babysitter, but being able to reimburse those costs right now may be a more realistic solution to that problem than, um, than us being able to offer it. 
I don't think we should stop talking about offering it because I think it's a great idea and that maybe when we have more bandwidth and do, do you think a, a pool of money for reimbursement for child and elder care would need to be approved by voters or is that something we could create in the budget I was thinking about that myself and it I mean it hey, we actually have this, uh, this on, the, on the finance committee agenda to talk about what are in our board line items right. and um, yeah. Because I think, no, I think in the same way we reimburse when someone goes to a conference. Mm -hmm. I think that's maybe we forego the yeah. stipend increase and put a few thousand together for reimbursement, mm -hmm. and maybe we spend it, maybe we don't. But yeah, maybe, exactly. Maybe we spend it, maybe we issue. don't, but it's also a value issue of what we value, right? Mm -hmm. And how we, we're building the culture for uh, our. And I think we could think a little outside the box, too. I mean, we're sitting in a high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we talked about getting more students involved in the in board operations. Um, so maybe we could recruit a group of students who would volunteer on a volunteer basis, but they could put on their college resume, you know, help out with child care. Or they like hours that they can put towards community service. Community service. Right. Mm -hmm. Girl Scouts. Because I mean, I know like in Northfield, there's a like a babysitting course, and there's a list of names of students who, who are CPR and mm -hmm. you know first aid certified, and that's what the parents use for babysitting as they, mm -hmm. they go to that list of names of, of high school students because they know they have that sort of additional training, um, and we use them for. Um, town hall meeting so we could get parents of young kids to show up at town hall meeting we had students come and do child care mm -hmm. so, so i think that's we, we, but it was usually the it, it was usually ella or usually kids that you know they were stuck with their because their parents mm -hmm. were there. So, if any of you All right, have teenagers, three years, Rosemary, teenagers. Teenagers. <laughs> also, as we travel to the different elementary schools, perhaps we tap into the PTNA, and then also yes. the Career Center. Is there a program at the Career Center that There's we scrapped that program three years ago, Stephen? Yeah. We would like to bring it back three years ago. Yeah. Five or six. It's more than five. Yes. Yeah. Um, if we're not well, we we yeah. right. well, we, we, can, we don't need to solve that because yeah. I don't want to keep you guys, and I know it's going to be raining and stuff, So, but I think it's headed in the right direction, and we will provide Megan and Clarity at our finance committee mm -hmm. <laughs> on, uh, mm -hmm. does that make sense? Reimbursement pool? Yeah, on the reimbursement pool. We need to so we'll, yeah, so. I, before we vote, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in this. Last oh, year, huh. last year mm -hmm. we had, you know, I proposed last year yeah. a significant increase. Yes, true. And we decided we would ratchet it up slowly. And the idea, you know, thinking outside the box is great, and babysitting is great, but this is a job and it's labor, and labor deserves to be paid. And we don't have any mechanics or loggers or machinists right, on the board because it takes time, and time is money. Yeah. And if we want to attract different people, we need to offer them incentives. And I think one of those incentives is money to make it worth people's time. I'm disappointed that we're not going to do that. But can, can I ask a question? Because this goes to the voters, correct? Like yes. this increase goes to the voters. It goes to the voters everywhere, right? Yeah. Whether, like our, if they say no, to the proposed 1100 and 2200. Um, does it revert to what we were getting before, or we get nothing? Oh, no, no, it reverts to, it what, reverts we to what we had before. Oh. But like every year, don't they have to, like, if we didn't make a change, it would go in as this. What happens when they say no? If they say no, then we do it for free. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's Unless right. Because we bring it before them again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The whole new ballot, the special election. Let's yeah. take this go for it. <laughs> yeah, that would be really, that would be really, really inexpensive. I, uh, I was just curious how that works. Yeah, like, right? Like, it would be point. like, here's this yeah, increase yeah, that we want. What do you guys think? Mm. But it's not the increase that they'd be voting on. It's the entirety of the reimbursement or the stipend. Okay. Well, it means that if there was an increase, there would need to be a fair amount of communication about yeah. why it is to highlight that it's for that reason, because some will read it as, what do you mean we're paying board members? That's where I had Correct. concerns, right, is we're like, we need to have these cuts because budget stuff, mm -hmm. but we would like to increase. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying I don't agree like that. I worried that people were going to read it as, 
here they are telling us we have to make cuts at the school at the student level and they're asking for more money for themselves and we all know what it amounts to total right where we all can do that math but they're not going to mm -hmm. um, and so I think there needs to be like Megan said we need to be very clear if we're gonna put that increase in we have to be a hundred percent clear why we're doing it and the importance and how it affects our students mm -hmm. Right, like we're doing all this training on student outcomes and having a diverse board mm -hmm. and being able to support people on the board. And I, I, guess I will. I, I think you're right, Jonas. We we talked about this, and and I think the one thing that we need to take into consideration is the context is different this year, for our, our reality as a board. And then, but we are we're taking care of it in some ways. Uh, in a different, so it's not like on support. I, I, I totally understand it. And then maybe next year, that maybe, you know, which probably it's not going to be until 2025, but maybe next year we would be able, instead of saying we do 50, we would do 100. Go ahead. Um, so I vote every year, and honestly, I have like no recollection. I'm sure I voted yes to this and have absolutely no recollection of what it was or what the statement was. So if a different number was on the ballot, I'm probably still going to check yes and not be like, oh, that's not what it was last year. I'm not, I'm not saying that there aren't people who are, but like, I, I'm just wondering if, if we are thinking about it more than Overthinking. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay. <laughs> then voters <So> maybe. <laughs> Especially if it's not like this. This is what it was last year, and this is what's going to be this year. If it's just an amount, right, you know. Everybody's okay. right. I, I think yeah. <laughs> and this one is hard. So I, I guess we can take a risk as a board, and you know, we just. But can and, we change the because that might be the key to changing the language so that it doesn't completely obliterate the amount to increase the annual compensation by $50. So if that gets voted right. down, then, uh, you know, or to increase mm -hmm. the following. Are we um, legally allowed to do that if they have to put the amount for our siphon in every year? I don't know. We, I mean, okay. I mean, but. Right, we'll what, find out we how can we can change it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it should be all across, because it should be, because I know we heard from the clerk and the treasurer. Yeah. It, Let's so call the question. Should. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, let's call the question. Oh, no. The no, question has been called. All those in favor of the motion as moved by Jonas and second by Kari. Please say aye. 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 Anyway. aye. All right, Eric, aye. you're back. Eric is back. Uh, <laughs> any opposed? No. Okay. So the motion carries. We'll increase the compensation. I will figure out the best way to word it. And then the, the other issue I saw on here was the um, the public hearing, which is the annual meeting. Yeah. Is that right? Did we talk to today about changing the time of that? Yes. Can I just say one thing about the compensation yeah. part? Hi. To me, we need to be capturing. There's uh, we talked about all these issues that pop up at this time of year and that we really need to begin those conversations right away. And so to me, this becomes one of those conversations we begin right away, is um, troubleshooting or problem solving around board uh, barriers to serving on the board. And if we're gonna say that we're gonna inch up, that we really set that in stone, we're all aware of it, we're all talking about it throughout. It becomes to me one of those parts of the journey again. Sounds, sounds good. And, we'll, and I've shared my concern board. about yeah. how it was paid out this year. So I think that needs to be also addressed. Yeah, we're going to look at it, uh, Lindy, at our finance committee, uh, our finance committee meeting. And we thought that this conversation uh, could mm -hmm. help. Uh, but not this conversation, the, 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 but line the, the line item, item yeah. the line item of the of the board. What what is? I, I think it would be good for us as a board to know what our line item mm -hmm. is. You know, like what, what? How much do we uh, put in for? I think it's more for me how a decision was made without any input, or a change was made, and it's not that I lost any kind of groceries or anything over it. Mm -hmm. It was not. Um, clear. Why? I think one of the clear. reasons we put it on the finance committee agenda is because I don't know the answer to that right. question. Suzanne yeah. does. 
So mm -hmm. uh, allowing us to pose the question to find out what the rationale was mm -hmm. might help us understand, and, yeah. or might not. And so I thought that's it was coming why, up that's at the last one yeah. in December. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's not in the agenda. But we we can I'm talk still, more about it because I, I see other confused. Like the way you only got half, but there was no thought. explanation. And about. that's what I thought was: did we reduce so this by we, half last year? Yeah. Sure. So can we talk about that at the end of the meeting as future agenda items? In fact. Uh, so let's just finish looking at the warning. Uh, so good uh, catch, hurry there. Uh, yeah. There is a 530. 530. Yes. Yeah, and, I mean, here. And, and the, the annual meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good to see you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's everybody's name was spelled right, and everybody is. So when will we sign there. these? Two? Yeah. 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 Not yeah. until we have a budget. Oh, on the 18th. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, right, right. And yeah. Berlin's time has to be decided, right? Yep. Yeah. So the one that's listed, the seven to seven, is sort of like a placeholder because they haven't decided fully yet. Yeah, Berlin never it's opens at seven. It's always opens at eight, and we've been working with them over the years. So hopefully, it would be the same. But yeah. Stephen is going to talk to his town clerk. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Stephen doesn't live in Berlin anymore. I can't get his signature. He lives in Berlin. They ran me out of Berlin. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, with page four or seven? Okay. <laughs> um, the C in the C in Leclerc is not capitalized. Does okay. It matters to anyone? Doesn't it, matter. It should be. It should be. <laughs> like, that's what I'm asking. So, yeah. I, we, I showed up to uh, sign, and mine was wrong. So I, I've got a couple of couple of questions. Why Why are Maggie and Rosie in quotes, and Lindy is in parentheses? And why is my name the only one that's offset to the left of the underscores? Not that these matter at all. <laughs> wow, well, Jonas. Knows who knows who yeah. So you we'll work on the consistency of those. Jonas, I think it's when I was running for JP in East Montpelier one year. They didn't put the Lindy, they put Melinda. Oh. Oh. I mean, I don't know. Nobody would know who that was yeah. except my mother, and she's not alive. Um, <laughs> and that's when I was But in what trouble. you're saying is they're referenced differently. But it's yeah. different. Yeah, we should have them all be in summer yes. and Yeah, yeah, we should have them all be. Maggie, are you okay with that? We, we, or we can just take Maggie and just leave your. What, what would you prefer? Mm, Margaret? I don't need a legal, it's Margaret, so that's part of the problem. People don't know how to pronounce it. I think it was not oh, my, Margaret. Margaret. Yeah. Okay. So, French, French or West apparently. Okay. <laughs> Margaret. Okay. So, what would you like? I. My name is Maggie, but that's not my legal name. That might Just be why. It's that's why we put it in. Right. So, put it, so that it people know who you are. Yeah. It doesn't I mean, have to be. I'm fine with Lindy Johnson. Well, I yeah. wonder if it connects though to how you're you registered know, your to vote. consent. Uh, it it says vote. here that you can use a nickname yeah. Yeah, if, yeah. if you've done it for at least three years prior to the election. So in terms of getting your name listed on the ballot. So Meaning you've used the nickname for three years. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I, and someone's tracking so, right, right? Yeah. <laughs> They're going to interview <laughs> all your friends and family. <laughs> so, well, they should do it. I thought, like, like right. serving on the board. So, so I, I think the easiest way for this is just please, <laughs> please send an email to Megan yeah. and myself. How would you like to be? Yeah. How would you like your name to be? And we will make sure that the name is correct. Okay. So we don't need to prove the warning today because it was right. just okay. for sharing. Yeah. Annual format, uh, annual report format. So, Megan, I'm gonna let you speak to this, but I was assuming this we were gonna do a report similar to what we did last year. Um, I actually was assuming that as well. So it was that combination of not being too fancy yeah. and um, not being newspaper. Right. And it was like it a just, letter from each principal. And I a letter see. from each principal, a letter from us, yep. and it just literally like last year. Is what and did were we specific in the same color but not fancy? Right. Not and were we specific in the impacts of the budget on each community? No. Because I think that was loud and clear requested. 
-hmm. That, uh, you know, it is a combined budget. What does that look like? I thought they building? had a table with. Yeah, we had a table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought so. I yeah, there was a table. The I, usually, I don't have my big bag because I usually carry it. I haven't reviewed it last year. I just found it on my file. I opened it. I saw the principal things, but I didn't look at it closely. Yeah, but we, we did show what it was the tax impact for each town. But I can tell the, 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 the staffing. The yeah. staffing impact. What does this look like in each school? What are the are changes? there changes occurring in each school based on this budget? Because that's community members ask very specifically yeah. what does this mean for my community school? Okay. So, so I think we're going to have to be very clear on. Right, like if it's a reduction, but not like we're cutting the program entirely, we need to say that and say that it will serve the students that are currently attending that school. Yeah, I mean, right? wording about is fine, but I think we need to be um, we need to be clear because um, that's one of the changes that occurs when it's a consolidated budget and a consolidated board, and so we just need to be sure that we're as clear as we can be. Um, and yeah, stating exactly what you're saying, Ursula, is fine. But it's better to be upfront about that so that people can ask the questions. I think one of the things that um, the the question a question that was raised in December that um, uh, the problem with highlighting the reductions is it doesn't talk about what's left. And there is one way to remedy that is to explain each one and say, this is not an elimination of music. This is a reduction based on enrollment. Mm -hmm. that, that is easy. Um, but it also occurs that there, it, what an annual report doesn't typically do is list all the other staffing that um, happens or you know, that exists in the system. So it's just an interesting question to highlight that one part. I, uh, the other thought that I was having was, um, to what extent do we wrap this conversation into the board communication of the budget conversation mm -hmm. that we'll have mm -hmm. after the, after we know where we land? Because right now we don't know where we're landing. Mm -hmm. um, facts and figures. I, I pulled it up. It is on the website. I think the facts and figures are important to have, and. One of the slides that you shared at our last one that I wanted us to keep putting up there were enrollment numbers. Mm -hmm. And I think that table is so important yeah. because it's real. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you see 100 students less, yeah. fewer, mm -hmm. in a school or whatever, that, yes, it might not be nicely even so that it's you know, we need one less grade five teacher or something. Right. But it does show that the resources have to be looked at differently. Mm -hmm. And then if there's a point two reduction in something, the children are getting just as much PE, music, art, whatever. Mm -hmm. But they aren't, there aren't as many children. Yep. Yep. And I think that table was an important one. And I think when I'm looking at some of these faculty and staff numbers, if it was more of a table that said in 2021, in 2022, in 2023, these numbers, how they're spread out is up to the administrators and the school for what works for your numbers. But I just think those kind of tables, when people are concerned, any business, if you have a reduction in how much business, you aren't open as often, or you don't have as much staff. And that's the same in a school. Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, that's important. I agree with that, just to tie these together. That I think of the annual report as our, it's like our key marketing mm -hmm. thing, should be very positive for the most part. Yeah. And um, so what we've done in the past worked really well. But, and, and our, when we talk about reductions or the, the hard parts of the budget, that should be in our budget conversation. Yeah, yeah. right. Um, but I agree that this is such an important trend, this long-term enrollment trend, that it should be highlighted in the annual report because that is something that the community just needs to understand. Mm -hmm. But in Berlin, our annual report did list mm -hmm. all the, I mean, we, that, you know, it was back to that age old uh, conversation about whether or not all the salaries are there. But you know, the section that was about Berlin 
had, a, you know, the Berlin School had lots of details about current programming and, and that. So when I think we had our individual towns, we did do a lot of minutia. And so it's just, it's finding that balance so that our voters are informed. So whatever that communication is, uh, it just, it needs to be present so that if somebody asks, well, what does this look like? Yes. We can say right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a question, I think, it last when we did it last year, we did it per per school. We felt like the facts and figures was a mm -hmm. way to be able to showcase the school without listing the staff. And then on the website, we had the list of the staff. You know, you could mm -hmm. look at the staff right, and stuff. Right. In order to also not present a report that had you know 50 right. pages right. that people are not going to look at. So I think what I'm hearing is maybe this time add, uh, let's leave the facts and figures because I think that's important per school because that's a way to really highlight what's going on in each school. Mm -hmm. and, but then have an extra table that will just show our, uh, in, our trends from like that we just looked in the budget for them, but not associate, so as, not as an umbrella, but separate for those not take out our facts and figures from each school mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. I think the facts and figures at each school it's important but then a table that shows it as a district those student numbers yeah just the enrollment, the enrollment. yes just the enrollment. that was really yeah. I think yeah. that was an eye-opening table yeah mm -hmm. that was more powerful than the the, the time series chart I think so yeah. going from 1500 to 1450 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. seeing that in five years we're projecting that the combined population of Doty and Romney will be less than Romney is now yeah is that yeah shocking mm -hmm. yeah and we've had a lot of real estate turnover but not necessarily to young families with young children mm -hmm. okay yeah. That's how far I can have that. <laughs> yeah, because we had that last table too. But yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll figure out a best way to yeah. answer and to run it by you. Just, or it's, just, I know. Who, who does the design? Ben Merrill. He has a he contracts with someone for the design part, but he's the lead. Okay. Um, yeah. And we'll have kids' pictures. And Yes. And stuff. And yep. And the numbers. Not too awesome. Not and too the numbers. Awesome. And <laughs> our own the local spending. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just made myself Oops. a note for that. So, superintendent evaluation okay. timeline. So, yep. So, yeah. so let's this quick. Uh, page 10. The uh, four things I want to say about this. One is. Under February, it says Superintendent Update Steering Committee on Climate Survey. We're going to uh, remember last year we talked about our system of evaluation will be informed by climate surveys alternating between student, family, and staff. We're going to hold off for a year, postpone one more year, and start that next year. Just time limitations. Um, and then, and then in January, it says board feedback survey. Just so you know, that's also going to be distributed like last year to the leadership team. That same survey. And, and to Megan for a self-evaluation. So we'll have all of that will be part of the data that we receive. Um, we, we had, in this timetable, we had given a full month to complete that survey. When we looked at it again today, we decided we need to shorten that. So we're gonna make it three weeks and the due date for the survey will be the third. You'll get plenty of uh, reminders about that. And you have more than enough time. Which uh, reminds me, of the last point is that we set a goal uh, together when we, um, establish this that a hundred percent of the board members will respond to the survey. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> we'll be bugging. <laughs> we won't let you forget that either. Uh, I, I want to make a quick comment yeah. and thank Jen yeah. mm. for helping us put this in place. But <laughs> no, really, that was huge. Mm -hmm. the, having that collaborative interaction between the board and the, and the superintendent last year helped us set the precedent that I, I think is going to work. Thank you, Jen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the transition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, any questions? Is that good? Okay. Yeah. Approved school choice numbers on page 11. So, could I have a motion? I, I thought we had done this at our previous meeting, but mm -hmm. we didn't do a formal motion. So, could I have a motion? 
We do this every year. I'll move to uh, approve the agreement to join the Winooski Valley in statewide choice for a public high school collaborative. Sorry. We all agree on 10 students, too, because we need that. So, yes, yeah, so it's 10 students. Say no so more than 10 students. Two, two and, right. and send no more than 40. Yeah, right. thank you. Right. So, Jonas, second. second by are these numbers different than last year? No, no they're same the same numbers. Then. Where do these numbers come from? Mm -hmm. They all get together, but I let you explain. Yeah, <laughs> we just get together. Correct. <laughs> we, we have the advantage of Michelle. Oh, there's Michelle. Oh. Um, is actually the person who coordinates this for the Winooski Valley oh. region. Um, and she will know more than I do about the history of the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> So the numbers are outlined in the law, and um, so you can accept 5% or 10, whichever is less, right? And it's only based on, for the high school enrollment grades 9 through 12, and it's only based on our residents. It doesn't include tuition, um, tuition students. And then you can let out 10% of your, your population or 40, whichever is less. So we always accept 10 and we always let out 40. There hasn't been a change based on the enrollment. It's been the same numbers for nine years now. Yeah, so I, I it, it, it historically it's been mm -hmm. the same. That's the, we voted these same numbers back when it was just our board and um, it works fine. This is, this doesn't affect us in any way, shape, we don't approach either number in oh, terms no, of actually we always have, have, always have the max that yeah. want to come in. Oh, yeah. We don't always approach the 40 numbers who want to go out. Okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, we all we always build 10 slots. Mm -hmm. We can't by law. We can't accept more than that. <laughs> well, th there's no money, no money. in exchange. This is yeah. not yeah. a money question at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so this doesn't affect our. Our bottom line, mm -hmm. so we just stick with them, what everybody else does. Mm -hmm. They're just concluded in our student numbers, the equally weighted students, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if they're included. I would hesitate to say exactly how it's calculated, but I think it's our students who go out are the ones that actually are the ones correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, we have a motion on the table. Okay, all those in favor of approving school choice numbers, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Thank you. Any opposed? Hearing on the motion carries. Okay, we're getting there. Policy committee. Uh, Chris also couldn't be with us uh, today. Uh, he sent his regrets. Mm -hmm. You received an updated uh, policy packet. In the in the mail, and there were a couple. I'm gonna let it, Megan sits on the policy on the policy committee, so I'm gonna let her speak to some of the policies. It, but we just have one. Um, oh, let me see where did I see my notes. So it's yeah. confusing for those of you that are using the printed packet because we didn't update the website yet. Yeah. Um, the, the so in December, the only policy we acted on was the one we had to, which was the non-discriminatory mascots. Um, and so we just took the memo from December and put it in the packet and then realized at steering committee today that it's kind of confusing. So, the, so if you checked your email, you got a revised memo that eliminated the non-discriminatory mascots, took off conflict of interest, and then just renumbered. So the substance of what you have if you are operating off of the old one is still okay, but I'll walk you through it. Essentially, there's three policies that you are looking at. Um, one is, a first; they're all first readings. Uh, homeless students, it's a new required policy. The draft is the uh, model policy. This, I'll just... I'll just run through all of them. And Natasha, feel free to weigh in if I miss something. Um, the second is a first reading of a revision in the weapons and firearms policy. That was a requested review. We did that because there's a clarification needed about what automatically requires a board hearing versus where there's discretion. 
Um, and then building use, um, we don't have a district-wide building use policy. We have had procedures in individual buildings. They vary. So this is a first draft um, that kind of merged, merged what existed before. And that is what you are giving input to today, is those three. Yes. Um, so on the homeless students who are homeless policy, the third paragraph, the district will ensure that homeless students are not stigmatized, and so on. Ensure seems very strong to me. Do you think about a different word? This is a, this is a model, model policy, policy. Yeah. so it was vetted by your lawyers and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It seems probably just beyond our control. Right. It's interesting. It's written, that language is written in the McKinney Vento Act, mm -hmm. which is the federal law that mm -hmm. prompts it. Um, it is sure, they're putting point. the burden on us. <laughs> I don't think yeah. they're meaning discriminated against or um, stigmatized by other students, although it would be great if we could control that. I think that it's that we need to make an effort to ensure that they're not being yeah. right yeah. and their yeah. yeah. resources are their status. Yeah. Yeah. status exclusively. Any other questions on that one? There's uh, ambiguity about the duration, so in administrative responsibilities remain in the school of origin. It, if it is in the student's best interest in order to maintain educational stability, for what duration? So the law yes. requires that they are able to stay, A, for as long as they continue to be homeless. So if they are homeless, that is, and there is no time limit mm -hmm. on homelessness. If they achieve permanent housing, they can stay through the end of the school year. Which is what's transition. typical as well for a yes. student yep. who mm -hmm. Was in housing and moving to different housing? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, that's that's right? a good question. Yeah. 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 Oh, if no, no, like no, you're, no. If you're, if you're just no. talking about yeah. you're moving. Yeah. Like, I think our district is typically like if you live within the district, right, and you're going to move to a different school, a I know, different house. Like, no, right, a different house. house. If you're moving yeah. to a different house in a different town, depending on the timeline, they've allowed your student to stay right. in the school that they started in. Right. So that there's that continuity for the year. That, for the that year, yeah. But that is that discussion. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So there is a distinction. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just curious. Yeah. I'm because one, you have the uh, option. If it's moving, right. you have the option as a board to, to decide. McKinney Vento, it's not an option. Mm -hmm. Those students have a right to it. Yeah. yeah. And we usually would have a recommendation from the team mm -hmm. working yeah. with the it's students. So it's like three quarters of the way into the school year or something. Yeah. It's not mm -hmm. October. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I just want to say from personal experience that, uh, at least in another district, the superintendent can immediately tell you to go to the other district that you moved into, because um, I did have that happen when I moved a few years ago. You're saying when you move... As like a, if you yes. choose to move. Yeah. Yes. If you choose to move, yeah, it's, it's different. Because yeah. Ver, yeah. yeah. Vermont's Title 16 is where you reside. Where you reside, yeah. So the law is that, and then exceptions happen after that. And parents can bring it to the board. <laughs> Correct. The superintendent can tell you you can come to the board. Mm -hmm. But they're guaranteed whatever school they started in for the homeless students. Correct. For, for homeless students. Yes. They started yes. in that year, even if they gain housing. As long as it's in the best. district different. They, they have, they as, parents actually have a choice. They can mm -hmm. keep them. I mean, the law was meant for school stability, so most do. Mm -hmm. But they also have the right to enroll way, where they are they're, living while they're homeless. The student yes. isn't forced to move or Correct. stay. It's that they're given the opportunity. Yes, and they have to that yes. opportunity. Yes. Correct. Including providing transportation mm -hmm. for whichever they choose. Yep. So it's first reading, so we don't need to do C5. No action. So C5. Any questions or input to? Yeah, the we talked. We did talk about this we before. Did, the yeah. just the the Cliff Notes version is. Um, if it's a firearm, it's an automatic board hearing. That's the law. Mm -hmm. We wanted discretion in the case of. Um, knives, mm -hmm. frankly, because there there are situations sometimes where discretion 
uh, would be beneficial. So the language here. And we've seen some of those yes. where kids yeah. go Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Parent Scouts, <laughs> camping yep. on the weekends, and it's or been a lot of life. Yeah. Yep. We this policy includes a other item, other objects used in an aggressive manner. Do we have a policy in like the student conduct or anything that covers that already? Well, our student our uh, conduct policy defines weapon the same. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you use your pencil as a weapon, it can be considered a weapon. And again, this is the first reading so if you did I know that a lot of people were you know, with the end of the year and stuff if you did not had a chance you, know, you can give input mm -hmm. we had a lot of conversations yes, about we this. did yeah <laughs> on the policy I think it probably took a, a couple yeah. meetings yeah. full meetings about the changes to the language I have a question I guess when school administrators are reviewing the situation how many people are involved in this decision on whether or not it's a dangerous weapon, or if the situation is threatening. Well, the responsibility lies with the principal. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to depend on the, I mean, Stephen has a team. <laughs> I'm a superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I would say in practice, even in the buildings where there's only one superintendent, there's a school counselor that's generally involved or a behavior systems person, sometimes a special educator. There's generally um, a group of people. Um, I become part of it. It's more than just the leadership team when it is here at U32. Um, is it specified in our procedures who sits on that group? No, it's just the decision maker. But that functionally, that's who's involved. How many is it, roughly? Like, or on average? Are we talking four? I mean, three? Would two? So it would, I would say it would depend upon the student. So yeah. if the student were under a plan, then it would probably include more people, right? Mm -hmm. um, if the student was not on a plan, then it probably would be probably three, to three or four at the mm -hmm. most. It kind of depends on the situation. Yeah. Really. Like, so at AU32, we'll bring in the, the teacher advisor mm -hmm. sometimes, depending on what it is. We would, you know, other, other teachers involved, so I, I, I wish I could give you an exact number, but it's, it's never one person. I can assure you of that, because none of us feel mm -hmm. like we can just make that unilaterally. I would say in my experience last year, it would, min it would be three in the elementary typically. If you had the principal, somebody else, generally a behavior support person or a school counselor, and then always the superintendent was involved in the conversation too. So at the elementary schools, it's probably typically the same three people, right? I mean, or? Yeah, often, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. to school counselor and or behavior, principal, and then bring the superintendent into the loop. I know that one of the things that did come up at policy committee was the question of informing the board versus mm -hmm. requiring mm -hmm. a board hearing. Um, I don't know that we landed language around that, but that and I don't know if that's what you're It's where I'm going, for. I guess, when it comes to the board, there are a minimum of eight people that have to hear it and, and listen to what the, the administration's bringing us for information and we get to ask questions. And so it, the more people that are seeing it, the less bias that, right? The less people that have it, the more likely bias can show up and you can say that a student, especially marginalized students, were acting in an aggressive manner when maybe they were acting in the same manner that another student was. And yet, for this student, we saw it as aggressive, and this student, we did not. And I have concerns, because if the board is seeing them, and there's this history of what's coming through, you can sort of be looking at all of your cases and go, do we see an issue of bias happening? Are we stopping bias from happening? And so if we aren't seeing a bunch of the situations then we don't know. I have a, one thought that I have related to that because that is a, an absolutely critical question that we have as well. Um, but a couple things. One, this was designed to avoid for the sake of the student and the family, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. the, and I, I'm using trauma, and I hope that's not too strong a word, but the trauma of having to come to a board. That was the purpose mm -hmm. of not requiring that. 
the conversation about disproportionality and what are our patterns, that is data that we, we collect and look at. And so from a, um, and we've even talked about this in ed quality, what are the other things that the board can look at to be able to keep track of that? Climate. And a lot of data related to equity is the disaggregation of regular data. So I wonder if one of the ways you get at that concern is the board seeing, maybe not student level reports, but this is these, these are the demographics of the yeah. students that find themselves in front of the board or who have major different discipline referrals or things like that. And the number of suspensions, because we don't, unless it's something that is of this level or um, is an appeal to the board, we don't even know how many suspensions are occurring. Mm -hmm. and right. so, and that could, right. And, and I think we had this conversation on the quality right. committee. Mm -hmm. right. that, that would be data that we can see sort of separate from, right. from the policy and can inform the policy yeah. later on. But, yeah. but it's part of student outcomes and experience yeah. and the culture mm -hmm. and, yeah. Do we have information data, it'll be anecdotal, um, on trauma that families have experienced coming to the board during a hearing? Uh, meaning, do we, have we gotten feedback from families about? I mean, informally, I can tell you, yes. So that's what I said. It was, it's and I have a shorter article. tenure, but I, you know, families reporting um, that this is really stressful for my child to have to come in front of the board. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll do a person. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's inherently stressful. Correct. Um, it does it does it add trauma to the experience. Um, I would say that that's probably more mixed, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think for some kids, it's obviously inherently stressful to be in a board hearing, but um, I don't know that it's additional trauma for some of those families. It's just continuing the what's yeah. happened um, for them. Okay. One thing, one thing I'll say is that in the four years I've been doing this, I have seen a repeat offense of that policy. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I think I've, we, there was, we, we saw one, you know, I think brandishing is a strong word, but we, there was a knife displayed, mm -hmm. right, in a threatening manner. Um, I don't know. I think this is serious stuff, and, you know, it probably is, it, it is not the end of the world and is not going to endanger students in the school, but I'm concerned about the signal that, it is less important that kids remember to take their knives out of their backpacks in their pockets before coming to school. Less of a big deal. That's all. I have another question. Um, if we were to adopt this policy as written, which is different than our past policy, is it gonna require a procedure update and when would we require, like when would the administration have to redo the procedure and or like disseminate that to the students mm -hmm. and families? Because we have a handbook that is out and so would an update be heading out, right? If we approved this at the next meeting, yeah, we would need to update it, it, it. Because this is addressing, it's basically taking what was a shall and making it a may, right? Um, it would be a minor update, but yes, the, pro the discipline procedures, which are in our handbooks, would have to be updated. Um, thank you for that phrasing, because I guess I was having trouble with the language of the policy and its discretion by omission, right? We're saying in this policy language, mm -hmm. still, if it's, a, if it's a firearm or destructive device, there will be a hearing. And yes. There's not really reference to what the what the process will be if it's just a dangerous item i.e a knife or a right. weapon in that category right because and and you're right and it's by reference because it's that the principal will implement the discipline procedures and that's where the may versus shall Somewhat comes oblique. in yep <laughs> and may I, one last question this would yep. be run by our lawyer after have you run this by our lawyer yet because sometimes or do you think it's minimal enough do not have to. This has it. not been formally l looked at by an okay. attorney. Yeah, the before we could, because, because, because we'll before we that. approve it, especially for but that's because we don't want to be our own uh, lawyers. So before we approve it, it should 
just go to whoever we would be using for that and then bring it back for us for approval. Especially for this one, I would be very worried. I would like somebody to look into the switchblade issue. I'm pretty sure switchblades in any length are not allowed in general. They're considered dangerous. Uh, they are considered dangerous, dangerous. weapons. All, all, all forms of knives in, are considered dangerous, dangerous weapons. There, the yeah. law requires a expulsion hearing only for firearms. That's the distinction. And destructive. Previously. Yeah, yeah and right. For bombs. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we can bring that. We yeah. can bring the whole conversation. We'll go back to the policy committee, including all of that. Good. Last one, building use policy. Any feedback? I think it's a big one. <laughs> Can I go it's back one. one? Sorry. Oh, what? Um, under policy information, this is still the firearms and weapons one. So right above where it says Part B, it says policy information, and it's like the superintendent shall annually provide the secretary of education, blah, blah, blah. At the end, it goes the type of firearms involved. Is it just firearms because of the law? Like, yes. We're not saying firearms and weapons. They don't really care about anything else. Uh -huh. They don't. They, we are not required by, except for we we report discipline data to the state. But other than that, we are not required to provide them data about expelling for a knife. A knife. We but are required fires. if okay. it was a firearm. And that's illegal. And that's a law. Yep. Yeah. Sorry. Nope. Okay, so moving into the use of school facilities policy. Any questions or input? Uh, yes. Um, section six, at the end it goes, the principal may only waive the fees subject to rules established by the board. The board shall receive the rules, review the rules and fees structure annually. Who's gonna develop those? And when? Yep. So we talked about this because that that is actually where we're particularly inconsistent. Um, there's a lot of really good reasons why there are fees associated, particularly at U32, around mm -hmm. you know fields and um, and so we have a rate sheet for U32. We're in the process of collecting the rate sheets for the other buildings. There needs to be consistency. We think, or at mm -hmm. least the policy committee. U32 is a rate sheet, yes. and the elementary schools are a rate sheet. That is the current thinking. So what we're in the process of is collecting the rate sheets for the elementary schools, seeing how different they are, and merging them. And so then there would be rules that would talk about waiving fees for specific groups. Right. In that statement. Yeah. And the rate sheet, by design, the policy committee did not want to include the rate sheet in the policy mm -hmm. because yeah. if we need to update those more often than we update mm -hmm. the policy. Will the board see those in those rules? Because it says that the rules are going to be developed by the board. And I think mm -hmm. that if we're going to vote on a policy that says we're going to follow these rules, the board should get to see the rules that we're saying we're going to follow. By rules, you mean the the, Which, the one ever, fees. Yeah, yeah, like the principal may only waive the fees subject to rules established by the board. Mm -hmm. And then we and have to review. And it says you will review the rules and, and fee structure and, yeah. annually. Mm -hmm. So is that on the policy committee to do? and then bring to us every year? Or is that a larger board? Well, eventually, once the policy is adopted, it would be a, for me to bring that to you annually. If what you are, if the input you're giving to the policy committee is I'm not ready to approve the policy until I see that, then that is information for the policy committee to talk about. I, I'm saying that if you're gonna have a policy that says it's due to these rules, you know, we're gonna follow these rules, it'd be nice to know what they are. Um, and then on number nine, Duration of use, it limits it to two months, and then the principal under certain circumstances can extend it another two. I was curious what the thought process was on that, and this is for like groups that use it on a regular basis. Like I know Romney has had basketball groups that come in and play every Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I will say with my other hat on, the Girl Scouts use it every other week. And so now you're asking groups to reapply mm -hmm. every two months to four months. And I was curious, that's like it's, two yeah. to three times in the year. And it's paperwork where these organizations it's, don't really have a. <laughs> but it's, 
They have volunteers, right? They have volunteers yes. too, and now we're asking our administration to process that paperwork. Right. Well, well I would remember too that this was modeled after after U thirty two's policy, which means yeah. they they do that and and it and it works. Now that doesn't I mean again it's first great. reading, yeah. so all this goes back for for consideration, but I did want you to know that that's where it, mm -hmm. it, it, it this was this was drafted by looking at the current uh, U32 uh, procedures and past policy, um, and then looking at the elementary schools who had been in the past policies. The past. In other words, it's been done that way. Doesn't mean it's particularly we, easy to administer, but yeah, we have had uh, U32. Like I can just think about the Green Mountain Orchestra, and it's more than two months. Yeah. Uh, that every Saturday, you know, so we could. We, it's yeah. a good point that that we could. There yeah. are so we 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 yeah. we've spent whole board meetings on this topic in the yeah. past. So mm -hmm. a lot of this would worked out during that, but it may not be pertinent now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it's up for review. As Jim just whispered in my ear, pre-COVID, you know, <laughs> yeah, like everything. Yeah, yeah. But, it's true. So uh, yeah. so it's worth looking at all of this again. Um, yeah, yeah. So we could adjust those times. And I, I just had a comment overall on the on the purpose. Uh, I think we're kind of this one also establishes that they use by other groups or entities whose mission is more general than just serving the school district, whether for profit or not profit, might be permitted under certain circumstances. I'm wondering if there's a better way to like say uh, that whatever organization is using our school, you know, reflects the values of. Of our no, I, I, I you know, um, I, I, I think you need to like get into, into use, that. So yeah. I yeah. think that's where okay. you you'd want to talk to your attorney about yeah. what's the proper language on that. And that, I was just going to point out number twelve got cut off. It looked like like we either missing part of a page. Oh, you're right. But and I think there's one more thing. Just a typo. And I think in line nine. Uh, in, in item nine, row, uh, line five, shall not be four Talk. more. I already got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> not golfing. Uh, I mean, Ursula, I'd also say there's this may extend clause in nine. Right? If there so is a may extend for like another two months is what I read, right? Upon yeah. showing yeah. of special yeah. circumstances, the principal or designee may extend the period up to an additional two months. Yeah. So it's still like, like every two up months, up December, and then and then you do it for the second half. But somewhere in there, you have to ask for that other two months. <laughs> you can't go ahead and schedule your Wednesdays at six for the year or something, or the third Wednesday. Yeah. We we can definitely look at this, and I suspect that functionally, it's a um, hey. By the way, we want to keep using this. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and that doesn't, doesn't mean I mean, it's doesn't mean it, the language couldn't be adjusted to make it clearer than mm -hmm. things like that. But the priority one was the one I was concerned with a little bit. Um, I had to read that a few times. Yeah. Well, so the priority is like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, not category one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. And if we have to use a school as a voting area because the town doesn't have anywhere else to vote and they're fifth in line, <laughs> we have a problem there. And uh, that was actually brought up by the Worcester Town Clerk. <laughs> so the policy committee. <laughs> yeah, I, we so, so, so it's, yeah, they've, they've, they've sent communication to yeah. us as a policy committee. So I was also thank you for reiterating that. Yeah, on yeah, the emergency yeah. shelter situation. Yeah, emergency, yeah. Shelter. yeah emergency shelter. Only because the power had just been out for yeah. so long. Well, one of the things that we did, and this is good feedback for the policy committee, but right under priorities of use, it references easements. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of, but that was somewhere else in the original one, and it's put up there to basically say, the easement trumps mm -hmm. this. So, so th something like voting um, is something that, the dis right, like that, that is a use that we would have to prioritize. Mm -hmm. This is good conversation in addition to the mm -hmm. other feedback we got for the policy committee. I'm emergency shelter would also mm -hmm. Yes, I that's I was curious <laughs> about what you write. I think that would change no. voting that, that maybe. Yeah, every voting. Um, um, yeah, I guess I was questioning what easement was. Like, do we yeah, have like a legal easement? Two of, our, two of our buildings have easements. Yeah, okay. Just two? 
I but like, I don't know if we have like legal easements with the town that we will allow them to vote at all five of our elementary schools. I'm curious about the easements for like, it shall be used for an emergency shelter when half the town has flooded or nobody it's has It's Callis and Middlesex that mm -hmm. have easements and they both say slightly different things. They both allow for voting okay. um, and uh, the Middlesex one also is like parking lot use and some other things. And rather than recreate the easements in this policy, which mm -hmm. actually that wasn't a draft, but it made it very clunky, yeah. we just basically said there are easements, and that <laughs> the principal they has to, to, yeah, has to. They're there, theirs. and you have to be aware. Yeah, <laughs> but if only two of them match that, then does another sentence need to be in here? about, because you said the easements supersede the... But East Montpelier doesn't have an easement. But if they don't right. have an easement, it's, does it's, the emergency shelter and the voting... The emergency you know, thing seems to be, always, yeah. to be always. separately addressed. Yeah. Just but like... We could have a line, line, right, that says yeah. Yeah. emergency yeah. shelter process. trumps everything and voting yeah. trumps everything but emergency shelter. Yeah, but I don't. I, don't, I, I think line. that it goes beyond our policy too. Just yeah. to remember that the emergency oh, says that, we can have that's all the policy we want. Yeah. They, yeah, they're they still have. Just yeah, mm -hmm. so they, have an they have an agreement. The emergency center comes first. Mm -hmm. You know that they. Okay. Uh, so uh, just to be to be clear, uh, the the other thing, and this might be just trauma for me, is that the principal or the shall manage and determine availability of the facilities on an ongoing basis. I I like. I, I like that a lot, and I don't know if there's a, because context matters, right? And, mm -hmm. and COVID was was hard, so having, um, you know, there were a, a lot of uh, requirements that were not your typical requirements. So I don't know if we, if, if it's strong enough, uh, the but, principal well, or designee, or might, maybe it'd be the designee, it could be the nurse. I don't know. It's yeah. right under scope. Oh, okay. It's the right under line. line. Yep. Yeah, well, maybe it says the designee, like which could be the nurse, right? I mean, yeah, yes, it could be. Like in the situation of COVID, the principal could be like, you know what? I'm going to let my COVID coordinator control access to the school. Okay. I don't know. I'm not trying to give you more work either, but I just want to give you <laughs> well, <it's laughs> some good. superintendent. I don't, I don't know, because in case of like we there's an emergency or there is anything mm -hmm. or there's there something coordinated that it, that it would it sort of come back to you, <laughs> right? There's also some <laughs> sentence not right. right. Or for maintaining confidential. Yeah. So for maintaining right. confidentiality under that Either some area. to one. maintain or, or yeah, to maintain. Yeah, the next down. Because sometimes I feel like you could right have a, a service oh, the community, whichever community is sort of organized, put a certain amount of pressure on mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. a principal. I, I just want to be able to. Yeah. Well, one thing that, <laughs> one way to address that would be uh, I would want that line to stay like that because yes. the principal does know that the first line. Mm -hmm. Yes, but later. A user, you know, where it talks about a user may appeal the principal's decision to the superintendent. That's right now. That line is just under the easement yeah. piece. Easement. Yeah. Yeah. That could be repeated, so that there's a. I mean, if that if the yes. intention is yeah. that that eventually there's. Um, yeah. Okay. Wait, are you are you wanting an, an ability for people to appeal the principal's decision all no. the time? No. Oh, okay. I, I'm wanting the superintendent to have. It more of a say, too, so that if needed, the superintendent could have also a say. In, like you know, like when we were in the pandemic, for example, you know, th mm -hmm. there was you know disagreement of when buildings could be used, right? But we had a pretty, you know, we were under staff. We couldn't, you know, I'm, I'm trying to preserve confidentiality here too, but it's just you know, so there were, you know that it would be good for the superintendent to be able to. So I was, but I, I'm okay with that sentence that we repeat it. Mm -hmm. Again, just to make sure, not, I'm not looking for people to be able to appeal as much as the superintendent, mm -hmm. but the superintendent to also have a say because you, the superintendent has the context of the five mm -hmm. schools, not just mm -hmm. the one school and we affect each other. It's a good question. I think where no, well, I think where I'm landing, or my current thought, and and we should we can talk about it is that um, we want this 
to give us adequate control in kind of the normal mm -hmm. state of being because yeah. if we tipped over into a situation where we had to restrict we may be in a you know one of the measures. temporary policies that gives the mm -hmm. superintendent kind of that's how that's how covid was addressed yeah. only because i also don't think we want to we don't want Megan getting every email for her. Hey, no, no, I'd no. like to use. No, 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 no. I that's, not what I, that's not what I meant. I that's not what I meant. For a baking content. No, I don't know. Or <laughs> like, can't they be no. <laughs> I want to allow 75 preschoolers to fling paint at each other, and they said no. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll send you the custodian bill. <laughs> okay, that one was the first reading, too, and it's 8 o'clock, so I'm going to get you guys out of here late. I, I'm just excited that we are that we had the time to spend this much time in policy, which we usually don't, and this is where we can do our best work too. So, thank you, everybody. So, moving into uh, approving the minutes, right? That's, yep. Yeah, we're set. Yep. So, I move to approve the minutes of December 15th and December 21st, with special thanks to the poor, poor scribe who had to take down <laughs> all that. Oh my God. God bless her. Second. <laughs> I'm going to second. It's I had a question slash amendment maybe <laughs> on the meeting for December 15th. Um, Nate Lovitz and Brittany Perry were there and they're not listed under others. And maybe they need to be. I don't know. Who? Say that again. Nate Lovitz and Brittany Perry were in attendance at the meeting. It, under oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to echo that these minutes are remarkably good. That's unbelievable. It's <laughs> an impossible task, and you did a really good job. It's an impossible task. I don't know how you do it. So, but that's a, I, I, two things I thought should be clarified. There were both comments by Suzanne, so she's here. But um, yeah. so on page 29, in the middle of that really long paragraph, uh, there's a section that starts with Daniel thanked everyone, and then he asked Suzanne about the excess spending threshold. You with me at all? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then in the next sentence, she noted that were it in place, we would be below it. I, oh. I think that should probably be, we would be below it un, under the level service budget draft, mm -hmm. just yeah. to clarify what yeah. that yeah. is referring to. Yeah. Say that again, sorry, sorry. We're, so just, were we would be place, below it, she noted. it under the level service budget draft. Budget. Was it draft two or was it draft? I mean, was it draft one or was it draft two? I think it was draft this two. Was draft two. This is draft it was, two. It was yeah. two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Also, the threshold is in place. It's just not being penalized. Right? Correct. 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 Yeah, it's Correct. been hold for five years, basically. So I say, well, are they recalculating it every year, even though yeah. they're yeah. not yeah. Yeah. implementing yeah. it? They're yeah. giving us yeah. like yeah. new yeah. 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 new information. Yeah. 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 They just aren't using. Right, they're not penalizing us as of. So, so the other one was at the bottom of page 30, uh, well, almost at the end. It says, Suzanne explained that much of the tax impact depends on information that comes from the state legislature. I think more precisely that would be the, the tax yes. rate yes. set by the state legislature or, or the dollar yield or tax rate, I think, is probably. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we could just say from the state. Okay. Yeah, what you think? Yeah, state. just yeah. for state. Yeah. State. Yeah. State. Yeah. State. Yeah. State. Yeah. state. Yeah. 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 Because mm -hmm. yep. it's the combination yeah. of people. Yeah. So was there a change about the, the um, sorry, uh, Daniel said something in the notes. Sure. Yeah. I was yeah. just saying that it, the, were, were the threshold um, subject to penalty, okay. we would be below it in the, with draft two. It's, yeah. Any other amendments? So all those in favor of approving the minutes as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? <laughs> Hearing none, the minutes have passed. 
Um, okay, future agenda items. Uh, it's just a link to the calendar, just because I've, but, and uh, Karim made a good comment today about adding when, which chapters we're reading and we'll keep improving. We got a couple of notes today about things to add to the calendar. Yep. To, and hopefully everybody's using it. Do you guys want to look at what's up? Or Megan, maybe you have it up already. Yeah, I mean, we, mm -hmm. we did add next week's uh, budget work session to the calendar. Um, that'll be the only agenda item. And then January 18th is the uh, budget forum. So the 11th is virtual, in-person location, the central office. And the 18th, we're at East Montpelier. So that's just a reminder in terms of location. Um, but the East Montpelier, because of the topic, will be a virtual option. So be in person, but that we would yeah. have the because ability to the, get because people. Because of the topic. Well, so it's well because it's the budget forum. It's the approved. So oh, I get often yeah. our second meeting is right. Right we, is we, more we live stream than it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you probably just said this, but is the eleventh a forum? And is the, is the eighteenth actually a forum? 18th was listed as a forum in our original work plan, and the 11th is just warned as a regular meeting. In my work plan, I wrote work, budget work session, but it's warned as a meeting. It's not warned with the word forum in it. The 11th is our well, forum implies we're listening, we're inviting people to invite, right? Yeah, so I think we might want to flip that and do the 11th, which is when we were hoping to hear from community. It doesn't matter the 11th. so much as on the, on the on the, on the talk about it. Yeah, so the, the 11th would be our community forum and the steering committee talked today and we'll make sure that we have similar to what we did the last time, we would have the presentation and then we'll have the community input. And if we could try to probably advertise that, it would be helpful. I don't know, do we have someone? in charge of like front porch forum and whatnot so front porch forum we only get four postings a month even though we pay so that we do rely on board members to yes. post in their communities and then it gets it the, where it typically goes is the uh, facebook page my newsletter um and m most of the building newsletters, put it out there as well. So I'm happy to write an invite. Carrie usually has done for us an update. I'm happy to write an invite and send that to the steering committee to post, like we've been doing. Can we talk about yeah. that in, in the, the reflection? The I, reflection. I, I, I wanted to talk about a communication app. Yeah. Oh. Um, anything else in the board calendar that, you know, I just want to make sure everybody has the link and everybody's able to look at it. And, okay. and that, so the change, so next week is going to be a forum. Yes, they and that'll be changed in the like the actual digital calendar. Yes, okay. and it's it's completely virtual. It is completely virtual, okay. like we did the other one. Okay, we felt like we needed to add it, another meeting. My after issue our is meeting. just when I go to my calendar and I look at this, it says community forum. So I'm looking at that's the, the schools. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's going to be changed. Do they I'm just thinking about other still people going to have a meeting. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about this as another way someone looks for this information. They're it's, looking at a calendar. It's only on your yeah. calendar because you're invited as a board, board member. Yeah. Nobody else. Okay, so, so the, the posting that gets public will have the right title. Yeah. Okay. But your question also reminds me to make sure Melissa updates the calendar yes, invite that's for your we, purposes. And, but but yeah. I think that's a place we get in trouble sometimes is that like the link's not correct or the time mm -hmm. has changed and mm -hmm. that being for me that's sometimes the place I go. I don't always go to one location to log in or to look for information. I expect it to be consistent across website, across an email communication, across a calendar. So that's why I was asking. Yeah. So the six, the, that was originally done on the days when we would have an ed quality meeting beforehand. We nudged the time back. Um, we six, don't six. have ed quality on the 18th. Right. So we so that, six. That should be that could be six. I can update we're, that we're in the board calendar. Yeah. 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 It should be six. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And the community forum we had it at six fifteen. We did. Yep. And changed the Sometimes it's six fifteen because we had an ed quality before. On the 11th, there's a policy. Yeah, we can do that in February. 
So, okay. um, yes. I'm assuming that's why we're starting at 6.15. The 11th. So yeah. the 11th to 6.15. Yeah, but then we said that policy would just might lose a few minutes because you guys usually go over, but we felt like 6.15 was like, not when I run it. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Six o'clock, you're all done. When Chris puts me in charge, we are done on time. <laughs> OK. So uh, future agenda items. So can I just, if yeah. we're going to have the 11th at 6.15, then February 1st at 6.15, why don't we make the 18th at 6.15? <laughs> Are you just for sure. consistency? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 I kind of. Um, and you need the 15 minutes. Well, anyways. we're. Yeah. If, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, my problem is usually getting to the ed quality on time because yeah. I have a meeting yeah. every Wednesday till 4 in Essex. Okay. Yep. So getting there at 5 time. is not possible. But. So. I just like the consistency mm -hmm. of the 615 works. <laughs> So, Kari, I, I think that let's do as part of board goals and calendar the communication. So, I want to do something different. Yeah. Today. So, I, I wanted to get a message out after this meeting, that, but, but it's basically about the, the next steps in the budgeting process. Mm -hmm. So, we're inviting everybody to the forum next week on the 11th at 6.15, right? And it's going to be uh, online. Yes. Yep. And, then, and then, from that meeting, we'll be taking, we'll be providing direction to the staff to get the final um, version of the proposed budget that we expect to adopt on January 18th at East Montpelier Elementary. Yeah. And if we put like wordage in there that says we really invite the public to. Yes, to yeah, the um, forum, yeah. especially. Yeah, to the forum. Yeah. 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 And, and the left. last thing, of course, is that after that, once we adopt it, then we'll be bringing it. A proposal to the community. Yeah, and that approval. we yeah, and a reminder that we will be approving it on the 18th. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and then the then the other message was about elections. You know, mm -hmm. it's getting out the 11th hour, but it's if if you're interested, contact us, one of us, um, and um, the petitions and consent of candidate forms are available from Rosie. I got that from. Or email to us, and both are due on the on January 30th. Mm -hmm. And if they need to, they can grab them usually from their town clerk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or can your we town, make oh, sure your town clerk. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. In here. Can we make sure that it speaks to the presence of a stipend? So for sure. It, because we had that conversation, and I think having that information in advance could inform somebody's consideration. Especially we're considering mm -hmm. reimbursement for child Well, no, no, no just that there is. There is, is stipend. Yeah, yeah, like I didn't know, like, I didn't Michaela, know there was a stipend. <laughs> and I definitely didn't, you know, have, I didn't was unaware that that even existed I when yeah. I was running. You and me both were. Yeah, and I voted for it, but, yeah. you know. Child care, twenty dollars an hour on average now. Like that, that could go a fair way. I know, but that's what it is. I got fifty cents an hour. Twenty dollars. Yeah. Was well, there something we were talking about earlier in today's agenda that you had said, Floor? We need to. We'll put that on future agenda item. Was there something? The finance start. The, talk yeah. About the, with how the pay. The, how the payment of the because we were talking about that a, a oh, budget yeah. a budget line. There were three. There were there were three things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but they were all under. They were all under finance. Under so finance I don't, don't want to. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to confuse. There's a little conversation right now, and I just want to make board members aware that. It, so by so we would be solic soliciting more board members running against the board members. That, Is that okay? Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. I'm I just. Healthy, you healthy, yeah. 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 I just want to inform. You know. Yes. I'm not sure. I know. I know. I just want to make sure that when well, we're doing. That we're not for making somebody feel like she wanted to run. So I just wanted to make sure that people understood that that's what we were doing. All right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, with that, now uh, we can. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So moving into board reflection, just because the topic of what we did today as a, uh, as, a as a board, uh, if we could use that, either share with us something that brought you joy while you were with in the. With, with your family or something that brought you joy while you've been on the board <laughs> this year, or something that would make your being on the board more 
happier. You know, like I, I want to use the positive sort of in the ways that we were talking about clarity and stuff like that. So if there's anything that you want to, you know, or, or something that would be more, uh, that would be helpful or something that you're thankful for, you know, sort of in that spirit, I thought that we could go around and reflect on that. It, if that makes sense. Also, mm -hmm. it's 8.20. I was hoping that we would be done at 8, so we also don't have to do it. So, I'll start. Yeah. I'll start. Um, Phil's gone, but I, mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the work we've done with him, and specifically um, back when we were in the cafeteria, having the discussion about um, you know board membership as service, and the importance of that, and the importance of instilling that in our children and the next generation has really changed how I talk to my kids about my role as a board member and hopefully convincing them it's a net positive for the family um, and hoping you know, that, that they see the value of it. So. Um, I was, the, when Phil was talking about the elements that, he, I think he said the hard skills versus the soft skills or however you put it, but the adaptive elements, um, I feel like that is something that if that's the cultural responsiveness and climate and, and things. I feel like that's something that we as a board strive to do, um, which is exciting to me that we're not stuck <laughs> in that other way of thinking, but that we do want to look at things creatively and outside the box. And um, and I really appreciate that about this board. Um, you know, we can always improve in that area, but. Compared to many of the boards that I've sat in on, we are doing amazing work. <laughs> and I mean that very positively. I will say, and it's something I think Jonas talked about, like that we talked about it earlier tonight, that we can have differences and difference of opinions and still have a civil conversation and, and share viewpoints with each other and I think people listen to each other and I really find that refreshing I guess and very positive and it happened tonight I think even when we talked about our stipend right there were so many viewpoints and so mm -hmm. many conflicting even probably within each of us right um and we still had a very positive conversation about it I also appreciated that we had time to talk about the policy mm -hmm. right like we had more time to dive into that and I appreciated that um, I think this board should be very, very grateful for the skills and dedication of its chair and vice chair uh, mm -hmm. and superintendent. Um, yeah, Kari, you bring so much. Uh, you have a planning mentality that that um, that's rare. Right, I've worked with a lot of planners. It's it's spectacular. Uh, something that also big brings me joy. I'm glad my kids were sick as heck during the vacation, so they didn't miss any more damn school. <laughs> like if it had to be sick, I don't think he was glad they were sick. Like <laughs> <laughs> gotta be sick. I mean, never. Yeah. Elias, go last. No, yeah. yeah. Um, I uh, I'm gonna get to the point of echoing other people's sentiments that. Um, in particular, I appreciate having an opportunity to have some dialogue before decision making rather than just rubber stamping things that are happening in committee. And I feel like in the time period that I've been here, I'm seeing that occurring with more frequency, and I appreciate that because um, I think we're a working board both in committees and, and when we meet as a full group. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity for education that's afforded us with both working with Phil and um, like our opportunity to work with our scholar in residence at the Calis Forum, just those opportunities as an educator, um, seeing it, experiencing it both as, a, as an educator and then as a board member, um, it's really enriching um, and um, I'm very appreciative for that. Yeah, I'm appreciative, I guess, of the I think it's the size of the board. I think mm -hmm. tonight I, I came to the table exhausted and mm -hmm. putting all my brain cells toward listening. Mm -hmm. And I just really appreciated how many people come engaged and ready to speak. And um, yeah, I know we've talked a little bit about shrinking the board size because it's difficult to field um, serious 
serious candidates. Maybe that's the right call, but I, I would hesitate if, it, if the effect was to have a smaller room of fewer people, because I think a conversation of, of this group, of, of, of a group of this size, is, is what we want. I think also, just reflecting on what Phil was talking about, and the whole emphasis on clarity, there were a couple passages that made me think about our, our strategic plan coming down the pike, and just feeling as if it's a daunting task. I feel daunted, I guess, um, by the, the, the self-awareness that we have to bring to that process. And I think the consolidation of this district and then COVID and um, transitions from superintendents, a lot of those things have sort of compounded that difficulty, which would be difficult for any Board, but I think, you know, just just naming that as a challenge, mm -hmm. I think, is worth worth doing, so that we we go in with our eyes open. That that sort of self awareness about what we are as a district and what we are as a board um, needs to be really worked on. I, I wanted to say that I've been on a few different boards uh, um, past uh, decade or so, and I'm, I'm on another board that's super high functioning, but I feel like given the challenge, the complexity of this, what we do here, I give us really high marks. I feel a, a, a real kinship with everybody here because because of how we deal with things effectively. And um, I think that there's a number of things that contribute to that. Part of it's like our central Vermont culture where it's expected that you're gonna listen and, and uh, work together, a town meeting kind of you know mentality. I give Floor a lot of credit. I, I credit um, having to meet on Zoom has actually made us better because you just have to listen when you're on Zoom. You have no choice. Uh, um, but ultimately, I think it's it, you know people doing the right thing, you know, and working together. Um, and not to make it not negative, but one thing I wanted to say, uh, the word of caution is that another factor probably is that we are more alike than different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our socioeconomic situation here, we're not a cross section. Yeah. And so to Maggie's point earlier, we just have to think about how we perpetuate this, you know, when it's not us here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I have great appreciation for the opportunity to have these dialogues and, and to have uh, the chance to get to know people that uh, I don't see in my day-to-day -day, uh, activities. And, and just really great appreciation, Megan, for what you bring to this, uh, to the conversations, to the leadership, uh, your, I, not that I was ever like frantic when things were happening, but um, but you if you there, you are consistent in how you respond, you are responsive, and so that has really calmed things. So it's I know that we can get answers. I know that we can um, have things explained, and whether or not we agree with it is it doesn't matter. It, we know there will be an answer, and so that is. Just great appreciation and floor you keep us going and I appreciate that yeah I, I think what you were just saying made me think trust and that's kind of an echo of what Diane was just saying is I trust the information we're getting is accurate and yet if we question or ask for more details we get it the few times I've had to email with things that have come up from either somebody in the community asking me a question or um, I get a response and I think that's really important uh, and so I feel like as a board we can say what we want and we're civil yeah and that's important as well so. um, Eric yeah, I want to um, kind of second what Ursula said earlier about, you know, being in this group that, you know, can have civil conversations when we don't always agree and having a great leadership floor 
And uh, I will say I am also extremely thankful for these hybrid meetings for cases like tonight where um, transportation kind of fell through and my daughter has swimming at Norwich. So, um, but still being able to be a part of it and uh, take part in the process, I think is it, really important and I think help. To me, it's more helpful than a lot of other things that were discussed tonight that might bring people uh, into the board. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so I'm very thankful for that. Thank you. That's great. I'm, I'm, I just want to say, I, I, I see each of you, and each of you brings something different and special. I'm always very emotional, so. But, <laughs> it, 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 but, but it's true, you know, like I feel a connection with each of you, and I could actually say a word of each of you that sort of, that I know how to, like, you know, like I know I can count on you on doing, you know, doing things or, you know, or I don't know. The diversity of thought is so important and the kinship. And I, Megan, I do, you made it so easy in some ways. You know, we had the good transition with Jen, and then you, it just it's just such a like a globe. You know, it just fits perfectly. Like you know, not to use Cinderella slippers or anything like that, but it's just like it's just it's just perfect. You know, like like and and I don't you know we're an evaluation and be perfect is a big word. It's uh, you know it's we're learning to dance together, all of us. With with you and the collaboration with the leadership team, mm -hmm. having such a strong leadership team, it just it, it it feels good. You know, I think we talked about this when we were actually interviewing. Like, what would it feel like? And I said, it just mm -hmm. it just feels normal. You know, it feels like <laughs> you know everyday work. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so I'm I'm grateful for for all of you. Yeah. yeah, I don't have a lot to add yeah. content-wise, <laughs> except actually just to share my gratitude because I I agree with what every what everyone has shared. This is a very high-functioning board who also wants to continue the work. It's mm -hmm. it, and I appreciate everyone's patience with me. Uh, you know, I I am new to the system and I am a new superintendent, and I am grateful for everyone's. Um, patience while I go find the answer to things, especially the things I don't know. Um, but yeah, I and I also would echo the, um, it does feel very natural. I think our conversations, even if we're not agreeing on, on things, um, they don't they don't feel threatening, they don't feel, and in this day and age, that is not, um, that is not always the case. So I'm very grateful. Okay. Adjourn. Adjourn. <laughs> I, I have a public comment. Oh, I'll sure. Speak for some okay. and be here. Is that okay? Sure. Yeah. Um, just in reflecting with what went on over the holidays, um, the Worcester community member brought it to my attention that they thought that Doty was the only school without a generator. I don't know if that's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know they don't have a generator. I don't know if they're the only school in the district without one. Um, and you know they only lost power for 24 hours, but just I don't know, flagging it to someone's attention, facilities, whatever, that um, it probably makes sense to have a generator in every school with climate change and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. It's, it's, uh, it's one of the things that we've learned. First of all, we all will will have an after action review in general. Uh, we've <laughs> talked about this. Um, and I know I've said this before, I think I said it in an email too, kudos to our facilities teams. Mm -hmm. yes. Chris yes. spent his entire Great. holiday going from building to building mm -hmm. and keeping them all running and all of that. Um, the part we were missing in Rumney is now back. We now have a generator that actually works. Wow. Um, and yes, and we also uncovered other things like which of our buildings is a shelter and yes. therefore someone else pays for the generator mm -hmm. and which, yeah. right, all those mm -hmm. things. So yes. Um, yeah. Right, exactly. The grants are important. Yeah, so we will have all of that. Everything from how do we interact with our select boards and <laughs> how do we help our, our town yeah. offices. So, and it was listed in our future projects, it's just we hadn't gotten there. <laughs> just like, yeah. so. Oops, that was a public comment that I wasn't yeah. supposed to respond to. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I got distracted because I was you giving it. Yeah. But it's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
A motion to adjourn. Moved. Seconded. Second. 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 Second.